What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the AFC East round table. Did I sound like TD? Um, yo, nope. ho, ho. Welcome back to AFC East round table. That's it's not bad. Now it's not bad. Ready. Yo, welcome back to the AFC East. Okay, enough of the uh, different impersonation. It ain't working. It ain't working, but it's okay <laughs> because when things don't work, you just keep flowing through life. That's what I've learned, but... All jokes aside, folks, welcome back to the channel. We are very fortunate to be live here on the AFC's Roundtable, presented by Roundtable Sports. We got the Super Bowl this week, and we want to preview the Super Bowl, the 49ers taking on the Chiefs, as we all know. Also, we're going to get deep into some offseason talks about the New York Jets, the Miami Dolphins, the Buffalo Bills, and the New England Patriots, maybe even stuff beyond that. So we're excited to have you guys in the show. Do not forget... Hit the thumbs up button right now on your way into the show. We would greatly, greatly appreciate if you can simply hit the like button for us, ladies and gentlemen. TD, how are you doing tonight, my man? I am doing phenomenal. I'm doing excellent. I'm doing great, man. Just great times. Um, we're in the off season. We're going to watch some good football um, on Sunday, and then we get into how can we can make our teams better. And I'm just trying to evaluate how the Dolphins can be better. Not many things we can do, but we're trying, man. Well, I, I've noticed I, I caught up a stir in the chat immediately because pe some people are like, let's go, Knicks. Yeah, Knicks. You see my Knicks apparel. And then we got GTA. Richie, how are you going to come on here not repping any Jets gear? Well, listen, man, the Jets are in full off season, and my New York Knicks are been therapy for me because they're numbing my Jets pain because the Knicks are actually winning. Basket I don't know what winning feels like, folks. So. Mm. We're honoring the Knicks tonight. We're obviously going to be talking about the Jets and the Jets. I love them to death. Don't you guys worry, but I'm in my Knicks mode right now. If you guys don't know any basketball fans out there, I do have a, a YouTube channel covering the New York Knicks, and I'm actually going to be live tomorrow all day. It's going to be a three plus hour live stream for the NBA trade deadline. And if you're interested to come on here, we're going to react to all the different trades across the NBA. Any basketball fans out there know that the trade deadline day is usually ridiculous trades left and right. We'll be live on there tomorrow at 12 p.m. EST. My YouTube channel is called Knicks Media, just in case there's any basketball fans out there interested to come on and hear my thoughts about some NBA news tomorrow. Mr. Dan Mitchell, how you doing, my man? Yo, my friend, I'm doing well. Uh, my ring light, in which that I had from the very beginning of my content creation journey, has died. So it was either that I sit on this couch and talk some ball with the boys, or I sit in absolute pitch darkness and talk some football with the boys. So um, sincerest apologies for the lack of aesthetic behind me, but it doesn't matter. That quality banter is still right there. Richie, I'm doing fantastic. Definitely a good thing. I've been deep into some draft stuff. I'm super excited about that. Really understanding quite a few prospects. And I also, okay, convinced TD Finstock today that Baker Mayfield would be a better option for the Miami Dolphins <laughs> than Tua on you the didn't US TV. Convince me. I just realized he yes, he is a better option. It wasn't convincing. But I planted the seed and the Baker light. Baker Mayfield's a better option than Tua. <laughs> yeah, 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 which is pretty well, funny. Baker but and two is better than anything in his division. <laughs> Listen, uh, it's no. funny. It's funny. Quite a bit of banter, guys. I do kind of want to go on ahead and give you a bit of a preview. Um, you've probably heard us mention this over and over and over again, but these three fine gentlemen that you are staring at right now on your phone screen, maybe even your TV, I don't even know, we're getting our own show. On BetUS TV starting on Monday, my friends. Okay, so really think about it as an extra, I'd say AFC East Roundtable for the most part, except for more league-wide. The show is going to be called The Huddle. I am so pumped for it to happen. Richie and TD and I, we have been putting a lot of work into this. And we plan on entertaining you on a daily basis. Not even just Mondays and Wednesdays anymore. It's going to be all over on BetUS TV. So if you haven't, please do us a favor and please go on ahead and subscribe to BetUS TV and mark your calendars and get ready. Because at 3 p.m. EST, Monday through Friday, we're going to be bringing that sauce, baby. And we're so oh, excited yeah. about it. Every single day, Monday through Friday. I mean, I'm already grown sick and tired of these two people, but now I got to be with them every single day. <laughs> so that's going to be interesting. Um, now, I put the link in the chat for those of you guys that want to go subscribe to that YouTube channel, put on the notifications so you guys know every time we go live again, every single day, starting this Monday after the Super Bowl, 
3 Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. EST to 4 p.m. It's an hour show. Uh, TD and Dan were live on there today. Us three were live on it three weeks ago. They got over 8,000 views. Uh, so you expect us three live here every single day. It's going to be called The Huddle, talking everything NFL. And somebody asked – um. Someone asked, no, this show can't go away. AFC's roundtable is not going anywhere. This show is still going to be live oh, no, it's not. Wednesday night. So we're still going to be live here every single Wednesday night to give you our usual, um, you know, the usual stuff, right? The Trust usual- me, ladies and gentlemen, roundtable then- sports and the AFC's roundtable is not going anywhere. All right. This no. is purely just the beginning. In fact, we're putting so much work into this that us three are actually meeting in Miami. Mitchell. Next week to plan out next year, the off season, the regular season. Maybe we might even throw out a couple of events. Is we're going straight up business meeting, ladies and gentlemen. We're we're walking up in there. We're gonna have a fancy ass steak dinner Friday night. Mm, baby, I'm excited about that. <laughs> By the way, I threw the card down, boys. Reservation secure. Let's go. <laughs> On Roundtable Sports. Uh, but, yeah, guys, as you guys know, there's a lot of things behind the scenes that we've been working on. And just be patient with us uh, and just keep supporting us because we really can't be doing the things that we're doing without you all. And we thank you all because what we're building is special. And you guys will – you guys get the idea, but there's something even bigger. Um, and we're really, really excited to continue the launch of what we got building. I also have one other quick announcement because this is the first time I can promote this. Uh, because the Roundtable Sports has a brand new series, a brand new show, and they released their first ever episode on it, guys. Um, let me put the link. I linked it in the chat. We released their first ever episode. It's the Draft Roundtable. So any NFL draft experts out there that just loves and everything about the NFL draft, Roundtable Sports on our mother channel, we have a new series. It's called Draft Roundtable, and it's featuring two people you're very familiar with, it's Ryan from Jess Talk 24-7 and Colby. Their first episode is up now. Top five stock up and stock down from the 2024 Senior Bowl. They broke down everything you need to know about the Senior Bowl. Really fun, extensive thoughts. So if you guys can do us a gigantic favor by simply just going here, supporting Roundtable Sports, watching it entirely, and they're going to be live all throughout um, leading up to the NFL Draft. And we're going to have a lot of special guests on there as well to break down some NFL draft stuff. So really, really fun things happening at Roundtable Sports. It's just one little taste of one idea of what you can expect of shows like this to launch in the offseason and more importantly, into the actual season. So I'm excited, man. Things are happening. So I feel like Roundtable Sports needs a Dan Mitchell show. (laughs) Chat, do you guys want a Dan Mitchell show? Would you tune in to... Dude, they would. They were a thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for Shirtless sure. Dan Mitchell. They better. <laughs> Dude, yeah, man. Most definitely. That or like just like me like chefing up in the kitchen <laughs> or something like that for some like tailgate food or something. Well, I mean, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. What do you think, TD? Are people going to watch? Uh, Dan Mitchell's shirt when he's shirtless and he's going crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll call it the mental decline. And so we'll also, call it the mental decline. Just watch as I slowly oh, lose man. my mind throughout the years. People I in the chat are asking, uh, where's Master at work? So Master at work, it's the off season right now. So he's just taking a break. Um, he, he'll be back, though. Don't you guys worry. In the off season, he likes to step away and just take a break. And we're excited to have him back on the channel. He's not going anywhere, Master at work. Uh, we're excited to continue that. I mean, we do miss him because we need a fourth person to represent the Patriots. I mean, we I guess we got to talk about the Patriots, even though he's not here. Because, you know, the, the whole idea of the roundtable is four people to represent each team. So we're missing a Patriots rep. Um, so we will – I'm wondering, are there any Patriots fans in the chat watching? Are there Patriots fans in the chat watching? Because we'll, we'll talk about the Patriots for you guys. We'll talk about the Patriots for you guys. And so I have a couple of people I think that could fill his shoes until he comes back, of course. And, yeah, most definitely. We uh, miss Tyson quite a bit. But, you know, it's always important to – I'd say, like, have a step back from work and reality. Unlike us three who are absolutely insane workaholics. But yeah, <laughs> um, I have – yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if Colby wants to do it. Or maybe even Jack. Jack might be interested to do some 
some mm-hmm. fill-in situations. Let's give him a call. Well, it is good to hear that we got some. We got Chris. Let's go. Any Patriots fans, get loud in the chat. Dirty Dan. Oh yeah, we're here. Oh god, is this. that me? Dirty Dan. Dirty Dan. Let's go. <laughs> My we got boy. Some super chats already. Tony Blitz Boy is not welcome back. Um, do you guys know who Blitz Boy is? Probably not. Blitz no, who's Blitz Boy? It's a Jets nickname. It's a nickname that we created for Jamal Adams. Um, Jamal Adams, when he was on the Jets, now he's just known for blitzing and not good in coverage. And now there's some rumors that, well, he's basically posting a lot of pictures on social media of him on the Jets. And um, he, I actually have inside information now that I think about it. Not really. Um, but I'll tell you guys a fun little story about Jamal Adams. La- two years ago, I was out to dinner at a high end restaurant in New York City for my friend's birthday. Nice. It was, it was, um, Oh Wendy's, my god! What was, said. what was it called? Wendy's. How did it catch? Is it Nobu? I think it was catch? catch. You, you were at Catch Full. Yeah, is that Catch? Good for, good for you, bro. So that's, anybody, that's a good place. Anybody knows Catch? You can expect people like, you know, athletes there, famous people there, and we were just going for my my friend's birthday, and across. And the funny part about the story is earlier that day I went to a meet and greet right, with Elijah Moore, the wide receiver for the Jets at the time. I went to meet him in Staten Island, and then that same night I went out to dinner. I, not even kidding you folks, I walked across the restaurant, and Elijah Moore was sitting there. I saw him earlier today with Jamal Adams and Marcus May. Marcus May is a former Jet as well. It was Marcus May and Jamal Adams as the two safeties at the time. And I'm looking, I'm like, dude, this is crazy. Elijah Moore, number one, is going to think I'm a stalker because I saw him earlier today. (laughs) Uh, Number two, I went up to them and I was talking to them and they were insinuating that Jamal Adams is open and would like to come back to the jets. Um, and that was two years ago. So that just tells me that Jamal does have a soft spot for the jets and he feels like things ended poorly and he wants to come back and, you know, right the wrongs. But at the end of the day, jets fans don't want anything to do with Jamal Adams coming back. I'll say that right now. So what's, what's your guys thoughts of Jamal Adams? Like, well, the Jets not wanting anything to do with it wouldn't matter. Ain't nobody can help the Jets. There ain't nobody that can help the Jets. The You're defense screwed. isn't the problem, you know? So, like, so the offense a... is the issue. Yeah, the big issue. Yeah, you need an offensive line. Yep. You need a quarterback. No, we a don't. Leg- we need a, a, legit, a legitimate we need starter. Sure. No, you we need, need a, a legitimate can we starting just, can quarterback. We be serious? Is I am being okay. serious. Okay, we'll who's get little, not old and washed. Okay, we'll replace Aaron Rodgers. Okay. Hall you of do, Richie. You need to replace him. Like you seriously do. Y'all don't see it yet. But y'all gonna find out the hard way next year. He washed. He's not even the same player, bro. And then he got hurt and had to sit a full season. He retired already, bro. He retired. Y'all don't get it. Y'all, oh my gosh, y'all don't understand the misery y'all about the experience. You realize, name one person that would be an upgrade over Aaron Rodgers about who's available for in the offseason. Everybody. Okay, that, that right there just tells me all I need to know that what you're saying is just complete troll. Y'all might as um, well bring Mike White back. <laughs> yeah, I mean. So for an upgrade for, I mean, no, I mean, so I will be honest with you, Richie. Um, like Rodgers is definitely your answer now. In the following year, but and I mean, I'm not even going to go out on a limb and say that I think that Aaron Rodgers would be a wonderful mentor, okay? Because history just tends to, uh, I'd say, look at Jordan prove Love. that wrong. Uh, that ain't um, cousin no Rodgers. What do you <laughs> mean? Here's the thing. Had a great relationship. My I thing is, great, is that I, oh I think God. that you, you guys have wild, enough. Bro. No, no, no. Listen, bro. Pure I'm not hate, trying to I hate, hate glasses on. It's crazy. No, dude, listen. I'm not trying to hate. I like Aaron Rodgers. He's the answer but, in New York. The as mentor, long as he can stay healthy. He but, literally mentored but Richie. Love. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that I think that you guys, you know, should consider trading up into the top three. Get Drake May. Get get uh is the kid out of LSU with Jaden. Get them, have them sit behind Aaron Rodgers, and boom, you're good to go. I mean, dare I say, go on ahead and maybe trade on up right to number one if possible right for chicago would probably be pretty difficult you probably need to send over an absolute package but i, I think this is probably the best thing i agree do. dan they need they need to go get their future to sit behind aaron Rodgers by week seven they'll realize how bad Rodgers is and they'll start their rookie it's that simple 
And that way you can find out what you got, Richie. You don't want to admit that there is a possibility that Rodgers just might be an average quarterback at best this year. And guess what? You know what an average quarterback does for the Jets? No. With the number one ranked defense in the NFL? No, no. It makes you a playoff team. Zach is average. No, he's not. Zach is not even average. He's Zach not average. below average. See, now you, now you, you a Zach hater. Stat. Now you a Zach hater. It ain't got nothing to do with the stats. Zach Wilson is not average, tra- bro. If Zach the Wilson man got was average. trash what? around him. Bro, Zach Wilson is not Z- average. He's Zach Wilson is average. an average quarterback. He's He makes plays. He knows how to escape the pocket and extend bro, plays. Do you need me to bring up the numbers? The guy has a like negative everything. <laughs> like There's nothing it positive ain't about, about his game. It ain't about the numbers when he got all that trash around him. He ain't got no true receivers. So you're he saying got Zach no true- Wilson is just as good as Aaron Rodgers. No, I well, you about to find out. Listen, Richie, no, 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 y'all, no, no. y'all say, say that over again. So you're basically saying Zach Wilson's average. What's Aaron Rodgers? What I'm saying to you, what's Richie, Aaron Rodgers? If Zach Wilson's average, Aaron Answer Rodgers the in the past is elite. Aaron Rodgers what is in he? the past, what he is right now at this very moment, average. Aaron Rodgers is probably average. Richie. So, th- so you. you're just said Zach Wilson, and Aaron Rodgers, same level. As of yeah, right now, today. that's what y'all about to find that's out. Right. So, so you're saying that Aaron Rodgers doesn't get hurt. We still have the same exact season, bro. You probably would have won that six games. I told you, <laughs> you're such a troll. It's so hard to like Zach Wilson won that game versus Buffalo. Dude, it's so and hard to have a conversation with you. It really is. Bro, it shouldn't be hard. Y'all are putting all y'all hope into Aaron Rodgers, and you don't know what version you're going to um, get. He so Zach Wilson didn't clip. win that. So Zach Wilson didn't win that game for the New York yes, Jets week one. Josh Allen. Pass? Josh Allen Jordan won that Whitehead. game for the New York Jets. No, Jordan Whitehead. <laughs> Come on, man. Jordan on, Whitehead, bro. Who, who picked him off three times. Um, I mean, Yo, was that his only three interceptions of the year, by the way? He had one more. So he had four. Oh, okay. I was about to say, okay. that would be pretty hysterical if that was the case. Richie, how would you feel if 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 Rodgers is like a bum next year? Like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, I mean, not- that would suck. I mean, how would you feel if your quarterback was a bum? I mean, what kind of – I uh, can't wait. Used to that. I can't that. wait. Whatever. Whatever. Don't get me started on Josh Allen. <laughs> you realize that we don't need Aaron Rodgers to be MVP elite to be good just know, because of how good the defense is. But he, he averaging. If you the can't defense wasn't that. at the level that we're at, then we would have to be like, oh, my God, Aaron Rodgers has bro, to carry us. But y'all that's defense is overrated, bro. Number one in the – Okay. Overrated. What did we do to that defense? What did we do to that defense? What bro, did we I'm not going to let defense? you try to come on here and just discredit and literally hate on the Jets and give them zero credit for everything. I'm not, I can, I'm not hating. I'm not hating. You are, you are a legit hater. Like, there's zero substance to no, this. You called Richie, me a hater before. You have you no – He's the player hater of the year. You, just you, you have no reason have to be so optimistic much. about the Jets. Bro, you just – say it again. Say the Jets' defense is overrated because the I want to hear you say that with the Jets. defense is obviously overrated. Miami ran all through y'all. Bro, don't even get me started. Well, bro, th- so that's what your substance you is. You're gonna hear game? this all season, Richie. You got Two swept. Games. Two all games? off season. And you got swept. We ran straight through you. And if that, oh, look what he does to good quarterbacks. It, man, the Dolphins ran all through y'all, and we were on the decline. So, all right, that, so you're basing the Jets defense off two games. That that tells me all, all I need to know. Man, Richie. That, that, that's pathetic. But Stop. I'm loving every single second of it, that's man. Pathetic. Listen, at the end of the day, okay, I think we all need to realize that, like, divisional teams build their teams out to compete within the division, all right? So the Jets, for example, do very, very, very well. Okay. So they the Jets, for us. example, so the Jets, for example, do very, very well against the Buffalo Bills offense. They've done it for the past right. three years. Um, That's right. And so I'll give you that. The Buffalo Bills own the Miami Dolphins. In yeah, all I don't own of the nothing, game. man. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I don't own right. nothing. Why? Then again, but then, but then. Okay, injuries, and you beat us without Aaron Rodgers, if you want to go back. Oh, the, then, then, so the really. Patriots... <laughs> so the Patriots have the Jets number because they're you know, built and they this guy is, Tony. do right from there. Yeah, and then it's just... Is he blamed injuries then, on the Dolphins, yeah. but we can't have the same to talk about the Jets injuries when the when the Dolphins beat. All the right, Jets. the Bills. <laughs> own, okay, okay, the Bills own us, but we own y'all. Richie. We own uh, y'all. You because you swept us this year. That's see okay. the problem is Richie. I'll give you that. 
The problem is when you allow two teams in your own <laughs> division to own you. We don't, two the teams don't own in your division. Anymore. The Patriots own y'all. No, y'all caught them at their worst time if ever. They, if they swept us again, I would say they do, but they don't anymore, baby. They uh, don't. Richie, one win out of 40 don't make y'all n- unowned. We don't own them, but they don't own us. You got swept, Richie. That's the – and you know what's hilarious? That's the only thing you have. It's all like, I need. Hey, this off season. Uh, all off season. Which is right? hilarious. Richie, I'm going to get you mad. I'm going to get you so mad at me sometimes. I know I'm going to break through. I'm going to break through because your team is trash. And they've been trash. And Aaron Rodgers is Miami y'all. Dolphins, by the way. Aaron Rodgers is y'all last hope. And he going to be trash. You're going to pay I, Tua Tagovailoa, one of the most overrated quarterbacks in the NFL, $50 million a year. No, we want to get Baker. Gonna He's going Baker, man. We want to get Baker, baby. Tell him, Dave, Baker, right? time. Baker. <laughs> it's Baker time. But it's also sad that the Miami Dolphins Baker are better than Aaron Rodgers the franchise the same level that. as the Jets, if not worse. Baker better than Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. No, he's not. not yeah, he is. Not yeah, he cold. is. Look at what Baker did last year and what Aaron Rodgers did last year. Yeah, Rodgers. <laughs> so that matter, baby. Yo, Richie, you have to know that. I mean, he's Aaron couldn't trolling even stay. Based Aaron Rodgers couldn't even stay on the field. He injury prone. See, like, uh, I honestly don't even know why I'm feeding into it because you're literally wearing this crazy, like... No, you, let me tell you why you feed into can it, you say, Can you because say something real deep that's down, a football take? No, the reason why you feed into it, Richie, because deep down inside, you know there's truth to it. You know, it's like... <laughs> okay, dang, say, man, say something that's true might to it. Give me trash. an example. Aaron Rodgers might do be trash now. That, that's what you're feeling inside. You know, no, I, mean, I saw, that, the, I saw them folk. I saw them four plays before he got hurt. Looked like a garbage, straight garbage. That's my point. As like, I literally have to learn to not take you seriously because your your football knowledge seems to be so low when you base things off of those types no, of scenarios. No, Just say, I, and Dolphins fans are like, "Yeah, get him, TD, get him." You know, TD. What, you like, know what's crazy? You literally I, have, like the way you speak as a hater against the Jets is like the most lowest IQ I've ever heard. Like, I don't like you. Facts. I don't like you. Give me something. That's not uh, hypocritical. Give me something that has evidence and substance and not just delusional no. low IQ football talk. And then I'll I'm have sorry. a real conversation. I, I, I swear y'all starting to be the fan base that I hate more than the Bills. And I hate See, and it's proven. I exactly. hate the Bills. Y'all, that y'all. That's exactly my yeah, point. It, it can prove, but I'm still with telling emotion, the truth. not objectivity. TD no, let me tell you, no. just admitted openly, I he's speaking with emotion and not objectivity about the New York Jets. And that's okay because years. guess what? This is the round table with division rivals. That's part no, of the show, baby. Y'all garbage. I don't went years on this channel, Richie, and I've never cared about talking to y'all. Y'all just been trash. But when y'all oh, got you, by the way. but when y'all got Aaron Rodgers, all your little wolf pack came out in droves. Oh, we're here. Oh, I'm yeah, like, where, who are y'all? where did y'all we're come back. from? And all of a sudden, you're poking your chest out like, yeah, you beat Raggedy <laughs> Buffalo. See, this was after Aaron Rodgers got hurt. You were still puffing your chest out. We you were saying field. Super Bowl. You yeah, were the Eagles. the Super Bowl in the same breath. You know how embarrassing and, that is? Amen. Don't even start it. It's <laughs> called you, being a fan. We'll it's win one before y'all. I'm we gonna win one before team. y'all. You were wrong about the Dolphins, just like I was wrong about the Jets. We're going to win one before y'all. It's a Dan Mitchell was right about the Bills. You literally can't say that if you have that hypocritical Dan, man, tendency, <laughs> bro. Dan, which team is closer to a Super Bowl, Jets or Dolphins? Tell the truth. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him the truth. Tell him that's right, Richie. That's so what is you talking about? Fan and objectivity. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, but still, uh, if you know we closer, that means if we're closer, that means that mm, Aaron Rodgers' no. time in New York is a waste. Y'all ain't gonna Whoa. win no Super Bowl. That's basically You're not gonna be better you're closer than because you made the playoffs last year and we didn't. It's that simple. That's all that means. No. So I wouldn't even say that. I mean, there's no evidence enough, yet for the Jets. And surprisingly I can surprisingly admit- enough, here's the deal. Like I well, first off, like now that, that the Dolphins lost out on Fangio, I have an entire new defensive coordinator. I have quite a few star players that are going to be pending free agents. We They're saw. going to pay Tua out the ass, not going to be the same defensively. Yeah. Um I love what the Jets have done, especially with all these young contracts on defense by itself. I think the defense for the Jets like really just said fuck it like after like they like got to like a certain record and they didn't go like 110% into it. Yeah, after Rogers we swept healthy. 
after Rogers we swept stays them. healthy, then I'd say the Jets are closer. Damn, man, Dan, you just being and stop, Dan. The Jets ain't no closer than no Miami. They got a quarterback they don't know what they're going to get from. They got all these overrated players like Salch Gardner and Garrett Wilson. Yeah. Brees Hall, Brees Hall ain't the weapon you thought he was because I remember doing all the preseason videos. Who got the best running back core? You were wrong, Richie. You were wrong. Our running, oh, are you going to sit here and say that our running back core ain't better than y'all's? Are you going to sit here right now and say that the Jets running back's better than the Dolphins? Brees Hall is better than any running back. You done Washington. lost your mind. What I'll, is I'll wrong with you? Okay, I could go literally <laughs> across every single metric and prove that. Like you pull it up, pull it up okay. and get proved wrong on camera. Pull it up, bro. It's a team. Like, like, like literally consensus wise, the NFL league like, wide knows Brees Hall is one of the top running backs in the league. Was Brees Hall at the Pro Bowl then? Was Brees Hall the second in the NFL anything, in all? Was Brees Hall at the Pro Bowl? And the Pro Bowl don't mean anything. Oh, Pro Come Bowl. On, Congrats, Stop. Pro Stop. Bowl. Who gives Stop. a fuck? <laughs> y'all don't lost y'all mind. Because <laughs> Mostert had touchdowns. Dude, you made Brees Hall the A-Chain, 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 A-Chain is ten bad. times better than the freaking Bro, Brees Hall. Brees Hall was second in the NFL behind the best running back in the NFL, Christian oh McCaffrey, in total yards. You lost it, bro. You done lost it, man. You done okay. lost it, Richie. You must be don't know who we got. Yeah, honestly, on. You TD, must be don't to be know. honest with you, I'm honestly done with this conversation because all you've been doing is spewing just hate nonsense, calling uh-huh. all of, like the Jets great players overrated. You're literally speaking as a delusional hater like nah, Richie, to the Jets, and you have no substance, no objectivity. So I don't even want to have this conversation with you if you're going to do this. I Richie, honestly don't. I'm not in the Richie, mood. <laughs> because you don't like the facts. You no, don't you like the facts. You just called Sauce Gardner and Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall overrated. You just said, y'all, Brees that's, Hall that's is better cool. than Raheem Mostert and better than yes. Devin chain yes what is wrong with you i'll tell you this td right now and go to pfl never What's know on PFL? if Brees, i'll tell you this right now if Brees hall was on the miami dolphins that played all 17 games last year i guarantee you he would have blown oh. every single stat out of the water that's called a system and the, the miami <sighs> dolphins deserve credit mcdaniel is a great offensive mind they have a great run game a great running coordinator you if you put Brees hall there the it's not even close like, bro, it's not even close. You got to give the Dolphins a running game their credit. The scheme Richie. has a lot to do with it, bro. Richie, go let me educate. Go look at the metrics, bro. Let Every time Brees Hall got the ball, he had nowhere to go, and he still was second in the NFL in yards. How many yards did he have, Richie? Over 1,500. Who? All-purpose yards. Oh, now we're going to all-purpose yards, Richie. We it's talking weapon. about running the ball. Stop it. Oh, come yeah, on. The Jets, Stop it. The Jets sucked at running the football. Their Stop offensive line sucks. It. Come yeah, on, do. bro. Now they you want to go to all-purpose yards. We talking about running back, running the rock. He ain't even close to our two running backs running the rock. This man ain't even close. This Didi, man. I wish, I wish we can full up a hypothetical because he, if you put a chain and Mostert on the Jets this season, and you y'all would have went to the, the playoffs. Dolphins, y'all would have went oh to the playoffs. God, the difference. You would have went to the playoffs. And the Miami Dolphins. And bro, oh my gosh, I can't believe what you just said. Bro, I can't believe what you said. You literally Richie, are exposing yourself, Richie, bro. Brees Hall yeah. had nine hundred and ninety-four rushing yards Con- on two hundred. You ever heard of context? Games. On 223 carries. Bro, Get out our here, system man. is awful. Our offensive line is awful. When you don't have a quarterback that provides a threat, the defense is going to stack up the box. Learn football, no, TD. No. Learn context. Richie, You're looking at numbers, Richie, and that's it. You're Richie, proving your low IQ. They stacked the box on look us, too. There's so much context, bro. You're not looking they at the context. They stacked the box on us, the too. Box score. If you look at the box score to tell you everything you need to know, that's that's all I need to know about your football. They college. stack the box on us too, Richie. You don't, man. No, you they think... don't, bro. Tua's lighting people up down the field, bro. What are you talking about? They're stacking the box. I can't believe it. I'm not even talking about most, and I'm giving you the rookie A chain. Brees Hall ain't even bro, better put than A chain. Them on the Jets and put Brees Hall on the Miami Dolphins with the same exact scenario that the Jets had to deal with the injuries. I guarantee Brees Hall does just as good, if not better, on the Miami Dolphins. And by the way, TD, why can't you just take the compliment I'm giving you? Because the Miami Dolphins offense is phenomenal. The Miami Dolphins run game is phenomenal. No, I'm not taking no. anything away from A Chain and Mostert, but no. the context and the ability, the around matters. And you're not even even considering that, which Richie. is so sad. Richie, it tells me all I need to know. 
We can move on because Richie, I know it's Richie, going nowhere. Richie, Brees Hall averaged 4.5 yards a carry. Do you know what A-Chain averaged? Yeah, I mean. What, continue. what, Richie? 7.8. 7. Thank you, 7.8. That's the average. It tells you it was A-Chain only had 103 attempts. Brees Hall had 223. He had double the attempts and only had Bro. 194 more yards. Okay, then. if you want a basis off of last year, congratulations. He had a better season. I mean, hey. like. If you hey, talk about the overall better he was a football rookie. player, he's a prospect, better football bro. player. A ten is a better football player than Brees Hall, bro. He do you know that he only played eleven games, Richie? You didn't know that A chain only played eleven games. The man put up eight hundred rushing yards, average seven point eight. He put up almost three hundred receiving yards. He might have had six. Eleven games, Richie. Brees Hall ain't better, bro. And he's not even better than Raheem Mostert, who led the league in touchdowns. I honestly can't even hear this. This is so sad that we have this guy saying this stuff. But oh my god, Richie! I'm not even gonna... Richie, you, really Richie, you, you stick it up for your boy. That's all it is. You stick it up. No, for him. it's not, bro. It's literally like you sound like an absolute. Like if we had an NFL, if we had somebody that's not a Dolphins or Jets fan, listen to this debate. Oh, I would love to hear their thoughts. Yeah, they would tell love you them it. thoughts. I they would, would love tell to hear that. Give me an man. NFL analyst on here, bro, because I know exactly what they would say. And so you're looking at three of them right here, bro. No, we're <laughs> he's blinded by the Miami <laughs> Dolphins outside. delusion right now. I actually yeah. can speak objective and give the Dolphins some credit. He can't do any of that, bro. It's called Richie. actually being an analyst, bro. Je no, you just disagree hey, with Richie. me and saying that I'm not being no, objective because you disagree. Uh, hey, Richie, listen, I would take Brees Hall over at Chen. I know you will, and that's why your You're team not always take lose. That, Dan, because you you are a Dolphins hater. We, but like, I, Dan, I guarantee if we got ten like NFL unbiased people, that yeah. seventy or eighty or ninety percent will pick Brees Hall, like one hundred ten percent. Like I saw so many things, like fantasy football, for example. I saw mock drafts for next year's fantasy football drafts. Brees Hall is the second running back off the board. A chain isn't even fifth or sixth or seventh. No, oh my thing. gosh, yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah. So it's only because he didn't play the whole season. But I guarantee you, projected, fantasy wise, but fantasy wise, A chain killed Brees Hall fantasy wise. Why are people okay, projecting yeah, yeah, Brees yeah, Hall to have a way better year than him? Because he's because the better he football player the and they're projecting the Jets' offense to get better around him. Because so Miami did debate. it by committee. They did so it by committee. Some, so let me put something in the context here. Okay. I think a lot of it when it comes into consistent. QB play obviously is going to help the run game out, right? At some point, the New York Jets quarterback play was so terrible, defenses knew that the only way they, they were going to be able to make a oh, chunk out of back. anything was run the ball. Don't care about they don't care about context here. No, because he, he should itself. be happy the quarterback was trash. He got shit. more carries. He's an efficient quarterback for the most part. So he got obviously, more you're going to have better opportunities to run the ball, and that's why you see those yards per carry so i guarantee time. i guarantee yeah. ha have a better season than Brees hall next year by far if he don't get hurt guarantee he was gonna have a better season this year if he didn't get hurt guaranteed man i can't believe you richie i cannot believe you real talk yeah. bro. shocking nah bro i i can't even have a conversation with you you're just a giant brick wall of <laughs> like hate it's ridiculous. Man. I'm not yeah, hating, man. Yeah, Richie's pissed. It's just like, it's like so tiring at some point. It's like, holy shit. Bro, like, he's better than Brees Hall. No, <laughs> that's like, okay for you to feel like that way. You're Listen, TD, you're totally allowed to feel that way as a Dolphins fan. Okay. But for you to still double down in the way this whole thing started, Sauce overrated, Garrett overrated, Brees overrated. Who else is overrated? The entire team. Quinnen's overrated. He's overpaid. Quincy Williams sucks. Who is a first team all pro? And Quincy ain't overrated. But I'm telling you now, Garrett Wilson ain't what y'all think he is. Garrett Wilson is not what y'all think he is. Not, <laughs> I'm not feeding into it this time. I'm just not. He's not, Richie. Garrett not. Wilson is not what y'all think he is, man. Tell me why. Because he overrated, bro. Tell me why. Because right here, you haven't said anything that makes because, me because believe in, you actually believe that. Because in year two, he regressed. Because in year two, he regressed. Yeah, he regressed. Okay. <laughs> he did. <laughs> 
He regrets. Dan, he had. He had. I'm not feeding into this. He had <laughs> more. Look at this. He had more. He had more receptions, but less yards. He had less yards per his average. He had less um, <laughs> touchdowns. He regressed, bro. Play has anything to do he had the same quarterback no, 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 play the year before, Dan. It doesn't matter, bro. It's okay. Dan, he had the same quarterback play the year before. You can't say that. <laughs> you can't say that. You can't use that excuse. See, he he you, had the same see, quarterback you, you, before. You triggered me with Brees, and I'm not allowing you to trigger me with Garrett. Like, I'm not. Like, I know what you're doing. <laughs> Dude. I'm not. Dude, listen, man. If it was up to TD, he would literally go through each and every single one of your favorite players, and we would spend 20 minutes per player. Aaron Rodgers Pro needed him. number one receiver dude, next dude. year, bro. Dude, he's he on needed one, number one receiver. I can unload on the Dolphins right now, but I'm just not going to because I don't need to. It's fine. I don't it's have fine, hate in my blood. Y'all need a number one receiver for Aaron Rodgers, and he going to look mid. I mean, I guess I understand now why everyone is entertained by this show because you just speak this, like, Oh, nonsense God, that's Richie. so entertaining no. and i'm curious are dolphins fans listening to everything you say on this show and like actually it's agreeing because if that's the the, if that's the case man dolphins fans they know when i'm trolling but this is the truth nah bro i if you're not trolling i'm scared for your nfl future this is uh, the truth richie richie is listen one thing i always yeah. realize in my takes no matter how egregious they may seem Time always tells, Richie. Time always tells. And you about to find out this year, Brees Hall is overrated. Garrett Wilson is overrated. And okay, I troll you about sauce. I troll you about sauce. But Garrett Wilson ain't that dude. He a good receiver. He a good receiver. He ain't up there with no Tyreek and Justin Jefferson class. He Not ain't yet. even close to that class. He ain't no Puka the cool. Did I say he was? He a little bit yeah, underwater. He a, he a, he a, he a, he's a little bit underwater. Like, what, what are you making it seem like? Like, what have I said about Garrett that, like, like where is this coming from? No, I'm just saying. I, I Listen, you think I done got over the offseason last year when we went through every position group and ranked them? Half Bro, of them you was wrong. Half of I'm, you, you I'm said. I'm sorry to were... tell you this, TD, and we'll never know. Well, maybe we'll know this year. But if Aaron Rodgers was healthy, everything would be different. And that's a fact. And if you if you roll your eyes and roll back and don't think that's actually a real thing, then I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, if, if you don't Tua, think Aaron Tua, Rodgers if Tua was healthy ball, last year, we would have beat Buffalo in the playoffs. Yeah, no, I, all listen, I'm saying, I heard it Garrett all. Wilson, for example, if Aaron Rodgers were throwing the ball to Garrett Wilson for hypothetically all 17 games, Aaron's healthy with Garrett Wilson, we would not be having this discussion. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Y'all are going to be severely disappointed next year when Aaron Rodgers get on that field. And what what's the Miami Dolphins season going to look like? Super Please enlighten me. You already know. Super so, TD, I have to ask a question, man. Like, where is, well, like, this, like, pure not. hatred for the Jets coming from, right? Like, Dan, the Bills, it didn't, it didn't come. It didn't come until week two of the season this year. I never hated on the Jets or didn't like the Jets because they weren't worth disliking. But it, it ain't worth it now, but still. The reason why I don't like them, because y'all make it seem like the Dolphin fan base is annoying, and maybe not you, Richie, but these Jets fans, especially on this round table this year, they got so cocky. Remember how they started? They beat y'all. They beat the Eagles. They won a few games. They like, yeah, without Aaron Rodgers, we up in here. Then it all came down crashing and burning. In perfect fashion, like we knew it would, because the Miami Dolphins swept you, Richie. We swept you. That's called being overly excited because a fan base that's been suffering forever. When we get a little bit of excitement, we get overexcited. We Nothing keep wrong suffering. with that. We keep it's suffering. Like, yeah, keep yeah, losing in the. <laughs> hey, at least we made it there. At least at we least make we runs. Made it. Stop, man. Six playoff wins the last time you won one. <laughs> Richie. We're the future, Richie, not the Jets. Six playoff wins. We're the it's future, the Richie, not last the Jets. One, one. I was two years old, and the Dolphins last won a playoff. That's a, but Richie, Honestly, you was alive. I do have to say, that is my favorite part about Dolphins fans hating on the Jets, is they believe, they like pretend that the Dolphins have done anything in the last 25 years that the Jets have We haven't. swept y'all. We swept y'all. That's all that matter. What did y'all say? Ain't no way we gonna sweep y'all. 
And then y'all start getting nervous. Like, if we could just win this one game on Black Friday, all will be well. Swept. Swept, Richie. Oh, you just avoiding the truth of your own team and putting all your anger on the Jets. I'll let it slide, TD. I'll let all slide. I know, in about two months from now, when we all start your these internal season, anger and disappointment, and you're just pouring it out on the Jets. Off-season videos about position groups. Make sure you put some respect on the Dolphin player's name this time. Well, I will because I am objective with those rankings and objective no. with those things. Not you if you not. got not if you got the 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 Jets running running back room better than the Dolphins. Or for doing running back room or individual players, that's the difference. either way. Either way, the problem is I think you're just so stuck on Brees Hall that you don't know what we got in Miami. It's not the case, bro. I mean, you don't think. Oh, I can't even ask you this question because it's not going to be a real answer. But Here we go. All I do is give real answers, baby. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, this isn't an excuse or anything, but you don't think it's a little bit impressive, the season that Brees Hall had after coming off tearing his ACL? You don't think that has anything to do with it? Did he have over 1,000-yard rusher? He had 994, bro. Oh, <laughs> coming up short. He literally Coming up short. So what, one, one last question. You val you evaluate a running back only by running the football. No, I evaluate the running back in a full package of a game, but at a minimum, so him you being got, second a, in the NFL no. behind Christian McCaffrey in all yards isn't impressive no. to you after coming no. off an ACL? No, because he a wide receiver. He a wide receiver. That's all it is. <laughs> and that's a negative, guys. By the way, it's no, because all y'all did is all, all y'all did is check down in yeah, the flat to him. Y'all check down in the flat to him ten times a game. You know why we did? Yeah, because if if I, if my guy had that, he would have had two thousand yards. No, the reason why we did and you guys didn't is because our run game is trash, and the only way we hey. can get Brees Hall the ball in space is by giving it to him in the run in the receiving game. Because when we hand the ball off to him, there's three players in the backfield immediately because the offensive line run scheme was awful. That's Damn why. Mitchell. Damn Mitchell, do you know do what you else? know what do you know what team had one of the worst O lines in the NFL this year? Uh was it the New York Jets, I'm assuming? No, no, no not the Jets. Uh the Tennessee Rich, Titans. Thank you. The Tennessee Titans. Yeah, that yeah. Is, is that is that gonna hold is that gonna just absolutely hold Derrick Henry back from running the ball? Well, dude has like what, like fifty pounds of muscle on Brees Hall. All I'm saying is, great running backs get it done any either way, Richie. And he got it, and we're gonna pretend he didn't get it done. No, <laughs> make it seem like Brees had an awful no. season, bro. No. Like, see that—that's what makes no sense. You're making it seem like Brees had a terrible year. Like, why are you discrediting his season? Like, I ain't say he had a terrible 4. year. Four point four yards saying. per carry is great. Congrats to H chain for seven. That's phenomenal. Um, by the way, very low attempts because he was injured, so it wasn't a lot of volume there. But you're making it seem like, TD, that Brees Hall had a bad year. I'm That's not he, saying he had a bad year. I'm hey, making it seem like he better than Brees Hall. A-Chain is better than A-Chain. It's better. Than, yeah, of course, Derrick Henry better than Brees Hall. But both of them are better than Brees Hall. That's all I'm saying. Okay, Richie? I don't. We don't have to argue, Richie. All I'm saying is Brees Hall is not a better running back than either of our You don't think the system has anything to do with it? The He's system not, has nothing to do with it. No, no, no. You ever heard runner, of the 49ers where you plug in any running back and it thrives? Runners run. You plug in any running back, and who was that guy? Mostert. Mostert was on the 49ers for years, and he was good. It was a committee approach. The scheme that they run is so good. For the, it's a running back friendly scheme. To and Shanahan that's what I think Trey. you're missing here. And we got a terrible old line in Miami. You guys ran the ball. Maybe your pass protection was bad, but your guys' run game was phenomenal. I mean, the holes no. you guys opened up was phenomenal. I was no. watching it, very impressed. I was like, why no. can't the Jets run the ball like this? Why can't we have our offensive line get pushed? Why can't we do the things that the No, we, we don't get pushed. Our running backs are just that great. Bro, every mm. single A-chain 70-yard touchdown I saw was him galloping through holes and having breakaway no, speed. No, that speed, the breakaway speed. Breakaway speed, Richie. Yeah, you see, the see, them guys was breaking tackles too. Those through guys were breaking tackles too. You know what Brees Hall, Brees Hall was doing? All right, bro. You know what? Going Brees down. Hall is a t bottom five running back. Garrett Wilson's a bum. And there's no reason for me to even talk about the Jets anymore in the show, it feels like. Brees Hall oh, is a, yeah. I can't Hall. even talk like real football, it feels like. It's just like, like is this trash talk? What is this?
Brees Hall is a top 20 running back. I'll give him that. Dude. Is that fair? Yo, dude, this is – I think this is, like, the most pissed off I've ever seen, Richie. <laughs> it's On just, like, sh- tiring. It's like, what am I even doing here? I'm, like, speaking to, like, a, a, a hating vortex <laughs> wall. It's like – it's just Richie. sucking my energy. It's like sucking my soul out of my y'all ain't, Cause y'all ain't gonna be no good, Richie. You might as well just say, "Hey, listen, man. The Knicks ain't gonna be no good either, Richie." I just feel bad for you, bro. All so, Richie. Around. So, Richie, you know what's interesting is is that a lot of people in the chat, especially during the middle of the season, they're just like, "You know what, Dan? They're like, why don't you ever stick up the TD when he says all these things about the Buffalo Bills?" And I always say the same answer. Mm-hmm. Because TD will be depressed in all due time, and the Buffalo Bills will take care of business. I think all you can do, Richie, is just hope that the Jets take care of business next year and just prep yourself for a long off season of conversations like this. Because Sit we, back, and eventually, Richie, it. maybe you'll have the Richie smirk. And I can't wait for the Richie smirk. I want to see the Richie smirk next year. He came until we know, until we don't sweep him, and we swept him. Mm. So does oh. does fantasy football running back rankings matter for this upcoming year to you? No, nope. who got who had more points last year? I'll say it again. Listen, <laughs> Richie, articles, dude, this is a battle you're not going to win, bro. Articles writing top running backs for this upcoming fantasy for draft. Fantasy football. And what's fantasy football? Let, let me let me ask you a question, Richie. If y'all tra- if y'all traded for Derrick Henry, do you think that get, um, Brees Hall would be at the top of that um list? <laughs> the only reason he up there because he the only thing you got to run the ball. We oh do it by committee. Gosh. We See, split this is the most carries. Backtracking things. We I've split. Ever- we split carries. He's the only one that pretty much runs the ball. That's the only reason they say he's going to do well in fantasy. And if the run game is that bad in the, in, with the Jets, and if he had under 1,000 yards, why does so many NFL sites have him at the top? Why? Just asking this question. That's the, that's the, because he's going to be the workhorse. They they assume he's going to be the But if he's count. bad, no, no, no. If he's bad and overrated, and if he's the workhorse, which he was last year, by the way. There's bad workhorse, and I'm not saying he's bad. <laughs> I'm just saying no, he it, ain't better than A-Chain. Then how uh, – A-Chain – let me just – Oh, Richie. I'm just Brace. pulling up many different sites. This is – this these sites, by the way, is what I was talking about. NFL objectivity. No AFC East. Okay. <laughs> Fantasy football rankings. Number one, the best running back mm-hmm. in the NFL, Christian McCaffrey. Who's number two? This is your favorite Hall. Devin, Devin A. Chain, number eight. Okay, so this is just my See, point that's here. that's all you that need the, to know. The NFL narrative, okay? The narrative outside of your little Dolphins delusional world is it's oh. consensus Richie, that Brees Hall Richie, is this, this the is better be, running back. The, the man had side. two times as many I'll show carries. you another site. Oh, look, another one. Oh, well, look who's two. Oh, my gosh. You cannot right. get what you're saying, Richie. That means Bro, nothing. It my means point absolutely is, nothing. these are projections for this upcoming year. Exactly, because we split the rock between Mostert and A-Chan. If Mostert don't, if they cut Mostert this offseason, A-Chan will go up to number one probably or number two behind McCaffrey. If, if Mostert got cut, then A-Chan's going to nah, be man. above result. Brees is a bum. See, see, that's what you do, Richie. You Brees, you don't want to stick to the good. argument, and then you want to go to the extreme. I didn't say Brees was a bum. Brees is he a did. good running back, but he's not better than A-Chain. That's the only point I'm making. Ooh. Bro, you put A-Chain on the Jets? What's A-Chain y'all, doing y'all, the Jets? Y'all, y'all, y'all would have made the playoffs. You put A-Chain on the Jets this year, bro. And you would have made the playoffs. Last he's faster. Year? Oh, that's nuts. That's he's nuts. a better he's playoff. Like he's Wallowed. a better running back. I can't allow that. would have been swallowed. And guess Jets. what? He would have got swallowed and had more production than Brees Hall. No, he wouldn't have. Yeah, he would have because he faster than Brees Hall. He would have got out of a lot of them situations. You, you remember week one? Do you remember week one when Brees Hall um, broke that deep run? Do you remember? Yeah. You, we were sitting right there in the stands and Brees Hall was running towards us. Yeah. Where did, where did he end up? Did he score the touchdown? TD, that was his first game off ACL. Like, that doesn't have any impact. 
He 100% healthy and he back. AJ hey, Wood scored a touchdown. He let them catch him. He was not 100% healthy in that game. Like, th this is where, like, I don't even want to keep talking because I'm trying not to get – because. Bro. I was he done tore his until ACL you brought up week the seven of the NFL stuff. season last year. That was it was remarkable for him to be available. Do you remember Dan Mitchell heading into the season that the Jets would be morons to play Brees Hall week one because of how fast he came back? TD, yeah. don't you remember that narrative? I do remember that narrative. Yeah, that was a thing. I made People it. were clowning the Jets. Why is Brees Hall playing week one? He tore his ACL week seven last year. How is he available? So you're gonna knock the kid for running 80 yards and running out of gas after his first game being back from an ACL surgery. Like, that just shows how much of a hater you are. If you ain't ready, you shouldn't be on the field. <laughs> Listen, all, okay, Richie, this is all I'm saying, okay? Brees Hall is a legit running back. He's that dude. He's just, I'm not saying he's a bum. He's great. He's just not better than Devin A-Chain. And you just don't see it because you didn't get a full picture of A-Chain. But what I saw on the field this year, I'm sorry. Ain't no running back doing what A-Chain was doing. You better be lucky he only played 11 games, Richie. Can we make a bet? Yeah, and that's I, what I've been telling you. I put anything that he have a better see. See, that's okay. the problem. You're it's by put... committee. But I would even go out on a limb to bet you, even by committee in Miami, he probably going to destroy it. He going to destroy Brees Hall. He might have 1,400 rushing yards next year or by committee, by the way. Yeah. And probably 500 passing yards. If Aaron Rodgers is healthy next year and Brees Hall stays healthy all year, oh, yeah, I will yeah, double then down. Brees Hall in trouble. Then Brees Hall, Hall in trouble. Full game. No, because Aaron Rodgers is slinging that rock. Aaron Rodgers is slinging to that Brees. rock. No. To Brees. No. What's your bet, Richie? No, you, you're you the one that, that offered the bet. What's your bet? I'll take whatever it is. Hmm. We, we'll, we'll come up with something. We'll come up with something. Like, I'm that's gonna make, how I'm going to make this good. I am. I'm gonna make this one good. Like this you're getting, good you're getting really That's how confident. Like, I'm sitting here like, no. Yeah, I, I'm into it. I'm into it because this is this is an easy win for me. I can guarantee he gonna have a better season next year. All right, la last Brees question, Hall. and then we'll move on. Who's the better player today, Sauce Gardner or Jalen Ramsey? Ty. Oh, dude! Here See that half right hour. there, Dan? Proves my here. point. All it don't prove to know that just proves that. <laughs> it don't just prove proves nothing. The last thirty minutes of talk. That right there. It don't prove all nothing. It don't prove nothing. How how you gonna how you gonna ask that question? <laughs> we really played half, play half uh... a season. We played half a season, man. No, man. He played Hold half on, a man. season. That's how many mistake. interceptions Sauce had? Oh my! Here we go again. I, I, can't, go down this road. See, I can't go down this road again, see, bro. You don't want to talk about it. How many Who's, interceptions saw said? Zero. He had a single pick. Nope. Man, get out of here, man! I told you, man. Man, stop, Richie. Stop. But stop. who's the AP All First Team? All pro. Yeah, because everybody like him. Yeah, the, the, the players it's and all. You? They like his teeth. They like his teeth. That's it. <laughs> you see, like. Listen, if he didn't make Listen, all pro, then I'd have no Ramsey thing, was hurt. Ramsey was hurt most of the season. And he got burnt many times on the field. Yeah, has well, never been oh, burnt hold in his on. Life. But he just came back from injury. You just used that with, with, with Brees Hall. Yeah, he came back from injury. He played limited reps, and he sucked. He had a 67 PFF. Todd. See, like, that right here, TD, I'm sorry. But this, you saying they're tied is proving my point of you can't be objective. Like, you Listen, literally can't. It's not in your blood. Sauce Gardner ain't going to be an all-time great because he can't so, catch If the I ball. asked 100 people on the NFL fans, who would you take on your team for this upcoming season, Sauce Gardner or Jalen Ramsey, only Dolphins fans would say Jalen Ramsey. Like, literally. I'm telling you. Every Richie, NFL fan would say, Sauce give me Sauce, he locks Sauce down can't catch the ball. He doesn't give up touchdowns. He, he doesn't can't give catch up the ball, anything. though. He can't get the turnovers, Richie. Okay, I mean that's how we evaluate. Good God, Warners. he's a bona fide. He he's down. a bona fide Byron Jones. He can lock you down, but can't get can't catch in the TD, I didn't want to get into this conversation. I just needed to prove a point by you not saying sauce. That. That's all Ramsey that do. Yeah, Ramsey's done ten point. times more in his career. It proved and it. You catch him on one season. Jalen was he not was a first all pro as a rookie. Sauce Garner's doing something we've so never what? seen. So what? So what? Tell Sauce to help his team win a Super Bowl. He's done his job. Tell Sauce to has. help his team win a Super Bowl. The defense has done their Ramsey job. Ramsey can intercept the ball. 
Okay, Ramsey also gets beat down the field many Ramsey, times for touchdowns, stop, which Sauce Ramsey, has never done stop, once. Stop it, Richie. You know what? I'll give stop. you credit. Sauce Gardner got beat maybe once this year. And you know who it was by? And it was, wasn't even beat. It was a great play. Jalen Waddle. See? Can't keep up with us, baby. <laughs> it, was a, it was a beautiful pass by Tua. Smoke that ball! Smoke it was, that ball! Sauce was literally all over him, and Jalen Waddle made a tremendous catch in traffic. Because he for, don't know what to do with the ball. All he no, know how to do is be close to you. All he know how to do is be close to you and hope them bum quarterbacks uh, mess up. That's Guys, all he you, know how to do. See, this was a test. Again, I give Waddle, the Dolphins Waddle credit. Smoked them. I give the what? Dolphins credit, and this is what TD turns into. No, Richie. Richie. It's, like, it's so Richie. Richie. You're, Waddle, TD, you know how predictable you are? You know how predictable Waddle, you are? Them. Sauce no. is still not even giving up a touchdown in his NFL career. Why he let Waddle smoke him like that? Smoke him. It was a 40-yard catch. He was in the slot. He That's big time. He, one. That was the only oh, big net he let so up all year. Because he was in the slot, it was harder for him. Oh, I thought he that dude. Said that. Never said that. See, I bring this up just to. I don't even know why I brought that up. I give the Dolphins credit, and you just like double down. But all right, and, and Waddle better than Garrett Wilson. Yes, he's you better than that. Garrett Wilson right now. All right, long as long as you ain't say that last year. Yeah, because I was hopeful that Aaron. <laughs> Another Rogers thing you were take wrong Garrett about. Wilson to an, I was hopeful that Aaron Garrett, Rogers. that Aaron Rodgers pairing with Garrett Wilson will take him to another level. He ain't got nothing to do with no Aaron Rodgers. You gonna learn, Richie. All right, man, let's go, man. We're supposed to be previewing the Super Bowl. You talk about the yeah, bums, dude, the bums on the shit. Jets. Yo, yo, dude, <laughs> that was fifty six minutes of Richie. Uh, <laughs> of Richie developing blood pressure issues at 25 years old. Fucking I. Listen, man. Uh, all right, I'll leave you. I'll leave you alone, Richie. He knows we're more superior. We got a better roster. Can we talk Super Bowl now? We take over, TD. We got a, a segment that we have to get to. Yes, man. This stream is being powered, ladies and gentlemen, by Bet US. Receive a 125% bonus. Oh, and they have a special promotion, by the way, where it's not just 125% bonus on your first deposit, but your first three deposits. Take advantage of that now. The Super Bowl is coming up. You already see. I don't know why the San Francisco 49ers are the favorite. I totally disagree with that. At minus two, which is really interesting, that over and under 47 and a half. And that money line minus 125 for San Francisco. Very interesting. Hey, um, the Gatorade. Did did they do they still have the Gatorade odds on there? Yeah, I don't know where it is in the site other than this the graphic. Okay, yeah. They, they if you, it is on the site somewhere where they have the Gatorade yes. color odds, heads or tails. So Shanahan um, said that his well, no, 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 never mind. He said his favorite flavor of Gatorade was water. So that doesn't really help out. Mm. Liquid color. Oh, dude, look at that. Holy shit. What is it? What am I doing? Blue, orange, purple, red, slash. Give me uh I think it's gotta be red, right? It's it's gotta be red, especially since both teams have red in their uniform. That's me. I bet they do purple like the promotion this year. Oh it's funny how you think that. Mm, or they can do the crimson like both teams color somewhat or, or red. It'd be Some interesting. Bad. Yeah. Some people in the chat saying blue, yellow. Mm. Yeah, I gotta go with the purple on this. And those are good odds, actually. But they, it could also be water. Like, how do they determine it? This is what I want to know. Do they make sure every single canister has the same color, or is it the color that first gets splashed on the Super Bowl winning coach? I feel like they probably give the teams variety. See, see, that's what's weird, though. It makes, yeah, I think they have all the colors in different ones, variety, probably. Think, yeah. And they probably want to see which one is being poured on the coach or something like that because um, it's it's tough, man, because how long would you actually have that prop up when, when, the, when the Gatorade is being made that morning? Interesting. But we shall see. NFL Picks and Prediction Show is up on BetUS YouTube channel. Check these guys out, ladies and gentlemen, because they are telling you what they feel are safe bets and some of the good bets that they found for you all to make. Uh, get some guides on how to bet the Super Bowl 
That's what these guys have been here for all season. And from my understanding, they have a really good reputation and track record. So make sure you go check them out on BetUS YouTube channel. And also, Richie talked to you guys about it earlier, Dan, too. BetUS TV. They got us three. We will be every single Monday through Friday, starting on Monday, in a brand new show called The Huddle. You'll mm. have your boys starting a brand new show. We're going to need every single one of you guys to come show up, show out, and support the channel. Show some love, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so excited to get this going. And ladies and gentlemen, if you wanted the preview of what's going to happen on that show, simply just rewind this episode for the past 55 minutes. All right? <laughs> that's going to be... That's going to be the damn show, baby. No, no, no. Honestly, man, like we're, uh, we're doing a shit ton of mock drafts, free agency, hypotheticals, the perfect offseason for your favorite NFL teams. Talking all NFL. And I mean, Monday, I mean, I feel like probably the episode is, is going to be our first takes after the big game. I mean, that's going to be our first time together after the big game in general. So it's, dude, it's, it's going to be wild, man. The damn Absolutely. Super Bowl. All right, I guess I'll kick it off, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm going to tell y'all up front, I can't bet against Mahomes this year. I've officially decided this was the first game that I could not decide who was going to win the Super Bowl, nor that I have any biased interest in this game. But I realize I cannot go against Patrick Mahomes. They're built for these moments. Purdy and company, they could come out and shock us. But I literally have the, the, the Kansas City Chiefs winning yet again another Super Bowl and everybody being mad in the end, all NFL fans being mad about it. Think so? Mm -hmm. Well, my friend TD, I'm going to have to disagree with you, my friend, because I was hosting the NFC West Roundtable last night. In case you guys haven't checked that out, certainly go <laughs> do. Uh, that is the one roundtable that I am the host of. And we happen to have uh, one of the teams represented on Roundtable Sports actually being in the Super Bowl. That's the 49ers. Jesse does a great job over there. But it came from our Rams YouTuber, our Rams contributor, that came in and really painted the light for me and really, it made sense. If you look at the San Francisco 49ers, man, one of the narratives that have been surrounding them has been that they have been escaping in the playoffs, right? Like barely, like, uh, uh, so the Packers game was number one. And then obviously when it came down into earlier into the playoffs by itself, right? Everyone's just talking about, yo, Lions almost beat them. Same thing with the Packers, et cetera, et cetera. But nobody on the face of the planet is talking about that the Kansas City Chiefs have been escaping the entire playoffs. They only ended up scoring 17 points against the Baltimore Ravens. All right? They mm. beat the Buffalo Bills by three points. And all season, we have seen the Kansas City Chiefs escape, 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 escape. The problems with the Kansas City Chiefs are still there. They have a wonderful defense. I'm not going to take that away from them. As long as the San Francisco 49ers don't make the dreaded mistake of giving up on the run, in which I see every single team do against Kansas City, because you can run against this team, and you have the best running back on the face of the planet to do it against Kansas City, the San Francisco 49ers should win this game. I think it's going to be close, but listen, I'm, I'm loving matchups. I am really, really loving matchups, man. I love the middle of the field for the San Francisco 49ers with Fred Warner and Greenlaw right in the middle on Travis Kelsey. I think the, I think they'll do a pretty good job of being able to contain him, at least for the most part, because that's quite frankly the only person that Patrick Mahomes truly does trust. I think Pacheco is going to have somewhat of a game because the San Francisco 49ers also are pretty bad at stopping the run by itself. But um, I think when you look at it, I think the San Francisco 49ers are just the better team. And I don't think that the Chiefs, quite frankly, have a chance to beat them outright. I think the San Francisco 49ers either win the Super Bowl or the San Francisco 49ers beat themselves in the Super Bowl going into it. I uh, have the 49ers winning, oh, 28-24. I'm going to echo what Norb did. By the way, you saw Norb's thing uh, last night, right, TD? Um, no, I haven't yet. Hey, Richie, would you mind playing that? If you could pull it up on Instagram right now <laughs> and pull up what this <laughs> dude ended up doing. He gave you the most detailed prediction 
of the Super Bowl you've ever seen in your entire life. And by the way, guys, Norb is our Seahawks contributor on the NFC West, and he's actually up for fan of the year, Sports Illustrated. Mm. Absolutely insane. So if you guys can go on ahead and vote for him too, that that would be great. I'm sure that you have your own respective fans uh, that are up there. Certainly do that. But uh, you can vote in unlimited amount of times. Norb is a great guy. He does a great job. And um, ho- uh, hopefully Richie can pull up this clip because what we're about to see from this prediction is absolutely stupid. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Can you guys hear it? It's an L3 brand deals, man. Can you hear that? Yep. After the 49ers, after the two-minute warning in a tight contest, they take the lead by a field goal. With less than two minutes to go, Mahomes and the Chiefs and company, they move down the field. 30 seconds to go, ball in midfield, time running out. Mahomes drops back. He looks towards the left. He looks right. He sees Rasheed Rice going down the right sideline. He throws it up. Oh, Javarius Ward is there. Breaks it up. But wait a second. There's a pass interference call on Javarius <laughs> Ward. The ball gets placed at the five-yard line after the pass interference call. Only 20, less than 20 seconds left. Mahomes, five-yard line. Crowd goes wild. Norb's going crazy at the 407 nosebleed sections. Mahomes drops back. He looks. Play action fake. He looks to the left again. Looks to the right. Who else is there but none other than the pre-scripted Travis Kelsey for the touchdown. He gets the ball. It's a 28-24 game with only seconds left. The 49ers still have one last chance. They squib kick it down the field. This is the only chance. They got to do a Stanford band play or some crap like that. They throw it left. Oh, they got, they run up to the left side. Oh, he throws it to the right. Oh, it's bounced around. Oh, but he fumbles it. It's recovered by the Chiefs. And the final score of Super Bowl 58, 28-24, the Chiefs. Steal it away in the final seconds of Super Bowl 58. It is the classic. Oh, but wait, there's more. Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift, they meet in the middle of the field. It's confetti blowing everywhere. Norbert's crying tears of, of envy. And they meet in the field. Kelsey takes the knee. Oh, my God, the cameras are there. CBS is loving this. They just got the Grammy for best album of the year. First time for four times in a row for, 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 for Taylor Swift. He takes the knee. Is he going to pop the question? No, he's just there to pick up some confetti to take home with him. But it doesn't matter. They kiss, they embrace, maybe a little bit of tongue for the cameras. And that's the way it finishes. 28-24, Chiefs of the 49ers. I'm the only one seen in here. That's how it's going to go. Go Chiefs. I'll see you guys at the Super Bowl. Dude, if that <laughs> it, happens exactly, that's what. <laughs> he's going to be there. He's going to be there. He's the fan of the year, man. For those who Dude, don't know, man, that was that dope. was wild. I was sitting there behind scenes because I produced those shows. If you guys didn't know, and I was losing it. <laughs> and love, some of you may it. not understand, he was trolling the 49ers guy on the screen. He kept mentioning his name. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, dude. But I have the same score, but I do have the 49ers winning that. I um I mean, listen, I mean, if you can say that the 49ers have been escaping uh, recently. Like you can't not say that the Kansas city chiefs have been escaping as well because I mean, that was know. my point, Dan, when you said the chiefs have been escaping and then I'm like, what are the 49ers surviving? Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Niners, I think have had a worse playoff run than the chiefs. In my opinion. Yeah. I, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't understand that narrative because the chiefs, mm-hmm. like wh- where do the chiefs go down three touchdowns at half? Where do the chiefs have to, it's, uh, you know, almost lose to the Packers. They didn't almost lose any of their games. There were tight games that they won, but they were never losing by a significant amount. So I don't really understand that perspective in my opinion. So I look at it from like this way, right? So the Kansas city chiefs, right? So the Kansas city chiefs are the second overall defense and the San Francisco 49ers are the third overall defense. But then when it comes into points scored, San Francisco is putting up close to 30 and this is all season and Kansas city is putting up close to 22. So I think that as long as there's no mistakes, like self-inflicted mistakes from the San Francisco 49ers offense, just throwing up 30 on everybody for the most part. um, That's why I'm giving San Francisco the edge. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, my my take on it is going to be what I said last uh, two weeks ago before the championship games. 
I picked the Ravens to beat the Chiefs with this with the idea in my head of like there's probably going to be something me regretting this pick because I usually never bet against Mahomes and I said this is the last time mm. I'm betting against Mahomes and if I lose this I'm never betting against him again. Therefore I'm not betting him against him in the Super Bowl. Give me the Super Bowl winning championship quarterback over Brock Purdy. Nothing against Brock Purdy, but experience matters in the big game. Not only that, but Andy Reid, Travis Kelsey, they know what to expect. I know that the San Francisco 49ers were in the Super Bowl five years ago against the Chiefs, so it's a rematch. So there are some people with Super Bowl experience there, but for the most part, it's a lot of new guys there, and I just think the experienced veterans of them, and like, I just find it hilarious how the Chiefs have literally been the underdogs in every single game they played in the, in the playoffs outside of the Miami Dolphins game. I believe they were the favorites because they were home in that one. Um, but outside of that, underdog against Buffalo, underdog against Baltimore, now underdog against San Francisco, they just keep winning. I have all my money on them, already placed a big bet. Unfortunately, I put money on it way too early where I put all my money on the Chiefs' money line when it was minus 110. Now it's at like plus 110. Um, so I mm. definitely lost some money there if the Chiefs did win. Um, but yeah, I just simply can't bet against the Chiefs. Everyone's been betting against them all year. I've been on them earlier in the playoffs. Everyone kept calling me uh, like, oh, you love Mahomes. Like, he's done. I'm like, nah, bro. Like, it's not that I love Mahomes. It's like I just regular season Mahomes and playoffs Mahomes, regular season Chiefs, playoff Chiefs, different animal. Everyone was holding on to their regular season performance. I'm like, it's not going to be the same thing. And they did exactly what I expected them to do, go to the AFC title game and then get into the Super Bowl. So I'm definitely going to be taking the Chiefs in this one. I already I put my money where my mouth is. Um, so we'll see if I'm right or wrong. The Chiefs have cashed. The Chiefs have made me a lot of money, and I decided I'm like, you know what, Chiefs, you made me a lot of money. I'm just gonna put all that money you made right on you winning the Super Bowl, kind of all in or not. Um, so, bet US. Hopefully, I'll be cashing out from you on uh, Sunday night. So you going Chiefs all in? All in on the Chiefs money line. Yeah, I think they win, bro. I really do. I just don't. I just so 49ers man again. Can Brock Purdy overcome what? Um, Jimmy G couldn't can Brock Purdy overcome what Jimmy G could, but let me ask y'all a question. If Brock Purdy wins his Super Bowl, where is he ranked in the NFL with quarterbacks? Uh, I mean, you have to be top 10. Is he, is he MVP in the game? Top 10. Is he super? Yeah. MVP? Yeah. Yeah. Or is it Christian McCaffrey? Him. Like, does he have a, does he have a game managing type of game where he puts up a touchdown, 184 yards, no turnovers, and Christian McCaffrey goes off and they win? Nope, three touchdowns, 326 yards, you know, no interceptions. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it depends on the performance. And if that's the performance, then I think he leaps into top 10. I mean, he has to. Why, <laughs> why wouldn't he be top two? Top because two? Because wins why, aren't a quarterback why, would, why wouldn't he be behind Mahomes? Because wins aren't a quarterback. He has to prove it don't it. have. It don't have to be. What? What would? What would Brock Purdy have not proved it, that anybody else again. has? I mean, I feel like. I mean, first of all, a lot of context matters, and I think that him he would have to do it again. And like, we haven't really seen Brock Purdy be the reason why the 49ers won yet. Like, no, for example, put, go ahead, my bad. No, I'm just saying, like, as much as we hate Josh Allen just because he's a Bill and a division rival, the Bills win or lose because of Josh Allen. So like he, like he is very valuable to the Bills, whereas Brock Purdy is proven to be very valuable for the 49ers, but there's so much around him that helps him out. So like we're wait, I'm waiting to see Brock Purdy kind of be the reason why they win, and that's not a knock on him. It's just a it credits how good the 49ers are. So like if he goes out there and puts up 350 yards, three touchdowns, and a Super Bowl MVP, he'll leapfrog. But I think you can't put him as like one of the best quarterbacks in the entire But well, last week in the clutch moment in the AFC NFC championship game, he, he led up. So no, he I don't, up. so what I'm saying, he win this Super Bowl and win Super Bowl MVP. What makes Josh Allen better? I'll let Dan answer that. What makes Lamar better? What makes anybody better other than Patrick Mahomes? What would make him better then? Um, I don't have the energy to explain that because you already know the answer. What? No, I'm serious. That's how what I felt, then. No, but 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 even if on you, this one, Richard. All right, dude, listen, man. Here's I'll the let deal, Dan all right? fight this with you, TD. If I'm you want to continue this narrative, and so if you want to continue this narrative, then I want you to rank all-time great quarterbacks and put Dan Marino literally below every single quarterback that has ever won a Super Bowl. Put I'm Dan Marino saying, below that. I'm not that's saying, because that's what you're 
because that's what you're saying, putting no, that on. No, I'm not. That's because the here's only why. Thing. No, that's it's the not. Thing. It's not. And here's why. Y'all keep on ignoring what Brock Purdy's done ever since he became a starter in the NFL. Listen, All the man has done is lost three games, pretty much. All he's listen, done is pretty win. much win. Yo, listen, you plug and play any quarterback in Shanahan's system. Stop, he's proved but, but it Rich, over and over and over and over again, man. He's doing his job, He's dude. proved it over. Well, so did Jimmy Garoppolo. Why don't and we so take... if Jimmy Garoppolo were to win that one Super Bowl last time, no, would you have put no, him as number two no. automatically? No, you wouldn't have. No, no, but guess what? We're talking about if he actually get over the hump, unlike Jimmy G. All I'm saying to you is Brock Purdy has actually done a little bit more than we're giving him credit for. The reason why Brock Purdy started at a deficit from a perception standpoint point is yeah. because of his draft capital if Brock Purdy was a number one overall pick and did exactly what he's already done nothing more nothing less y'all would be talking about him greater than Herbert Burrow and all of them it's only because he wasn't drafted high do y'all not give him the respect and you think that it has to do with everything around him that's but not it was, at all if he that's was number one overall pick and he balled out the way he did, he has, y'all would have simply said, hey, he's that dude. You know what I mean, that's why he was drafted number one overall. Man, come on, man. Brock Purdy has done – he doesn't lose the game for his team off the Shanahan, point. Shanahan systems, you plug and play any other starting quarterback in this league and either the Dolphins or the 49ers, and they finish the exact same season with here's those what, numbers. It's how it works. Problem. You here's plug and play with any argument. starting quarterback. What about Tua, Dan? Yeah, same thing. I'm but saying, here's here's same here's, thing with Tua. If here's you were the with Tua, the 49ers, they would be as far as they were right no, now. No, here's guarantee. the problem with that argument. You can still see the behaviors in the skill set of a player within that system. You can still see what they can and what they can't do. Tell me what Purdy can do. I can tell you a whole bunch of stuff I can see that Tua can't do in this system. But tell me what Purdy can't do. Listen, man, I'm like, I'm not knocking the argument. He's a good quarterback. If he wins the Super Bowl, I mean, honestly, right now, I think Brock Purdy is top 10. If his team wins the Super Bowl, that does not propel him to number two. That does not propel him to number five. He's so top I'm, 10. I give him I'm number asking, eight. That's what my I'm answer. asking you is, if he was on the Buffalo Bills, what would he not be able to do? We haven't, we, we haven't seen Quite him a bit. on his back yet, and he doesn't have to, so we're never going to have to see that. He hasn't had to put the team on his back. And the to, only so opportunity. He did it last week in the, on the biggest stage. Has Josh Allen ever did that on the biggest stage? No, he's no, not sitting home. First of all, he let, has, me just, let me just first say that. Like, he I, has I, two perfect performances in when? playoff history. When? Okay, against the, the Patriots. And, and, of course, the Kansas City Chiefs game in 13 seconds. Oh, and Josh Allen ball. He, he called. He called. Him. And Josh no, Allen statistically no, is perfect. perhaps the best quarterback that exists in this league right now. In the playoffs. So what happens it's true. if Josh Allen's it's on the true. 49ers? If Josh Allen was on the 49ers, they would be exactly where they are right now. Eight wins. Listen, dude. Any quarterback you plug and play into the 49ers or the Miami Dolphins, Shanahan system, get it, all right? And all of the personnel that's around them, they would all be in the same situation. We don't know that, Dan. We're making that assumption. Basically, what we're doing... And so, but, but here's the deal. Like, you can't also say that because I can return that and say, okay, you put Brock Purdy on the Buffalo Bills or you put Brock Purdy into a mid situation, not even the worst situation in the NFL. Like, you take away like one or two key pieces. Like, you don't have a Christian McCaffrey in the run game. You have like a mid run game by itself. Would he perform the best? We don't know. We'll never know. But I yeah, will say. But y'all make that assumption about but, Purdy. Y'all make but, it seem like it's only what's around him. I'm not hating on Purdy. I'm saying he's a good quarterback, but I just think it's wild that you that you're even suggesting to put him as the second best quarterback in the league. No, because here's why. If just like Joe Burrow, we know Joe Burrow is that dude, right? Mm -hmm. If the San Francisco 49ers would have drafted a Joe Burrow, I don't care if it, if he had they a did. they drafted Trey Lance. <laughs> Well, here's what I'm saying. If they would have, um, if Burrow would have got in trouble and he would have slid to the third round, and he's the same Joe Burrow, but the 49ers would have drafted him in the third round, we would be saying the same thing. Well, Burrow has everything around him. It's the Shanahan system. Well, did Burrow still win the title at LSU and still have the big name and have just like that camaraderie around him? Because there's a lot of buzz around Joe Burrow. There was not a lot of buzz around Brock. I Purdy get that, college. but even if he I'm just didn't, saying from that. There's a lot of buzz around Burrow, even. Yeah, That's I don't make the hypothetical. But the college argument, I mean, look at, um, you know, look at guys like 
uh what's his name um look at guys like uh um, tom, tom brady. brady yeah you know <laughs> no yeah so, absolutely uh, i think i think with brock purdy he he's slowly proving the doubters wrong and he's proved a lot to me i think that game winning drive at, um, against the Packers really impressed me because it showed me that he can step up in the clutch. Like when that drive started, I was excited as an NFL fan. I'm like, oh, this is Brock Purdy's moment. We're about to, he's about to reveal to us who he is as a quarterback. And he did everything he needed to do. Had a perfect drive. Wasn't playing good that entire game, but when the mat when it when he needed to play his best football, he did that. And they went down the field, and McCaffrey scored a touchdown. Mm -hmm. And then against the Lions, he struggled early on, and then he got it together. The second half, they ended up and winning. Pulled it together. So this, I, I give nothing but respect to him. And if you look at the numbers too, I mean, like he's definitely a top quarterback. I mean, but he can't prove himself. He's to be above guys like Josh Allen and Lamar because so listen, so you, know why, you know why though, so TD? Listen. Because he needs to have like the the top level quarterbacks, right? Mahomes, even Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, even Joe Burrow, those types of quarterbacks. Do you know what they have that Brock Purdy hasn't shown? It's simple. It's like the highlight real level plays. Like those are like the stars. Like. The improvisation, somehow escaping the pocket, extending a play, and making a crazy, ridiculous throw across your body down the field. Like, those are kind of like top level quarterback type of things. Not to say Brock Purdy can't do that, because it, it's still a very small sample size, by the way, of what we've seen from Brock Purdy to this point. I, he can all of a sudden start doing these types of yeah. things in the Super Bowl. I think and he's so, talented yeah, enough yeah. to do it. And so, why why doesn't he, he have the hey, same hey, trajectory hey, as hey. Tom Brady? Because, because here's also the same <laughs> why thing not? as well. And so did you notice the three games that the San Francisco 49ers ended up losing this year? Yeah. Let me tell you exactly why. Debo Samuel wasn't out there. And he Trent was Williams gone. wasn't either. A piece, a piece of his system was absolutely gone. Where, like, you look at quarterbacks like Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, they're still winning games. If you don't have the San Francisco 49ers' perfect system in place, Brock Purdy, to this day, hasn't proven that he can put the team on his back with key injuries, key players being out. Something Josh Allen, Pat Mahomes, Lamar Jackson have proven over and over and over and over again that they can overcome. So that's my answer. Can we, can we agree, though, that we like Pat Mahomes is on another level? No one even is touching his level? He is. Yeah, yeah he yeah. is. He is. Except for that, according to PFF with Josh Allen, he was the uh, number one ranked quarterback this year. But anyway. Um, just but when it matters most. Uh, dude. Josh Allen ain't playing defense, man, man dude, dude. I think when it comes to Brock Purdy, you guys, Purdy, oh, you guys blow my defense. mind. Ain't you guys got blow, to do with no defense. You guys blow my damn mind, man. <laughs> Bro, he dude, missed listen, the pass man, this, to Shador, man. The this, this, this second hour is going to be me being angry, I think. I think this is exactly what it's going to be. Welcome <laughs> to the AFC's roundtable. Um... <laughs> No, 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 dude. Listen, man, back to I'm Purdy. Like TD. Even, even him going at no. Dan, I'm like, damn, man, I know where this is going. Like, <laughs> I'm just saying, Rich, you talk about Josh Allen ain't the reason. He no, missed the no. easy pass, Richie. That was the Super Bowl. They would have been in the Super Bowl, Richie. No, they would have still got They beat the Ravens? No, and so you didn't. know what, TD? Here's the deal as well. Like, why I think that Brock Purdy doesn't get the respect that he deserves, because – you don't shit on him for his most minute mistakes, even if he makes a small mistake. Like, you haven't shit on him once for that three-game losing streak without Debo and Trent, where if Josh Allen were to do that, you'd be like, oh, man, he's supposed to be like this generational quarterback. He should have won without those two. And you're sitting there coddling him. So the day that you start, the day that you start saying, Brock Purdy, man, he has no excuses. He has no excuses, man. He should have won those games without Trent, without Debo Samuel. That's the day. Where you know that he's made it. As of and, right now, he's like hovering around number six, number seven, and number eight based off of um, like top. Here, 10 the only rankings. way he gets it to top five is this: he wins the Super Bowl, yeah, and then he does it again next year. Doesn't win so, the Super Bowl, but so, he has a great so, season next year. He goes another playoff yeah. run. Then, because it is a little too small of a sample size for me to put yeah. number two. Like so, I need to see more. I need to see years yeah. consistently. We saw an elite rookie year last year. <laughs> And unfortunately for him, he got hurt in the playoffs. We saw another elite year this year. If he wins the Super Bowl, he's top 10. And then next year, if they are the first seed again, they're in the NFC title game, or maybe, dare I say, in the Super Bowl again, and Brock Purdy is a big reason for it, then it's time to have the top five conversation. I just need to see a little bit more. Brock That's how I'm so, Brock Purdy so, is the second best quarterback in the NFL, man. You're nuts. All right. He is. You're, you're absolutely crazy. This man ain't did number do his job ever since he came in the league. Dude, he just hey, showed up to work. I would love to have he him. He just uh, showed up to work. And he, put, and he worked when he got there, dude. Dude, 
dude. Dude, and, like you're giving him a participation. Up, like it's you know what he didn't do? He didn't miss Shakur in the back of the end zone. No, dude. <laughs> the funny thing though about uh Brock Purdy, not the funny thing, but it's not even just like, oh, he's winning, he's on the 49ers. Like, look at the numbers, bro. Like the Thank numbers you. Are amazing. 44 touchdowns and 15 interceptions in his career so far. Like me looking at that, I'm just so salty because that's 15 interceptions. How as many Josh Jets, Allen had in one as season? As a Jets fan, bro, it makes me sick to my stomach. It's all I ever wanted. He to better see. than Josh Allen. I don't even want to hear it, Dan. He better than Josh Allen, bro. Fifteen you total know. interceptions in his career, forty-four touchdowns. So I'm, so I'm not, so I'm not addressing that by by <laughs> any stretch of the imagination. I'm not taking the bait because it's no, so. No, 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 it ain't no bait. It's you know, smart, it. Dan. It's, it's so ridiculous, yeah. Richie. It's so, Richie. It's, Richie. It's so Richie. absurd. The bait. Richie, I took we, the bait earlier, about, bro, and I regret it. Richie, we talking about a seventh round pick, bro. Okay, mm. who had four forty three hundred yards this year, mm -hmm. thirty one touchdowns, eleven interceptions. When we got people over here throwing five hundred and sixty interceptions in a season, TD, I can add, I can give you more ammo real quick. Go look up Josh Allen's first two years in the NFL and go. Oh to no! I, oh, I know his first few years better than anybody. He was a bum of all bums, the worst type of bum. So don't show me, no Josh hey, Allen hey, 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 hey. Purdy got a me, better upside. Show me on this doll where Josh Allen's hurt both of you. <laughs> Listen, Brock <laughs> Purdy, Brock Purdy has already accomplished more than Josh Allen's whole career. Already, <laughs> dude. <laughs> already, Dan, you had Josh Allen, and so Josh Allen, okay, Over has out like has had a better season than Patrick Mahomes. Statistically, oh, all season by Patrick itself. Mahomes. We talk if we about were, Brock Purdy. If we were exactly, but like y'all anoint Pat Mahomes as the best quarterback in the NFL, which I agree at yeah. the end of the day. But like then, like you're gonna sit here and you're gonna say that the only quarterback that statistically goes pound for pound against him, okay, that's the closest to a 500 matchup that any quarterback in the entire league is against him. That you that you have the audacity of trying to tell me who's 500 against Mahomes. You have the audacity. Four and three. Four and three. We talking playoffs, man. We're talking games. Oh and three. It doesn't, dude, oh it doesn't matter. Matchup and matchup. Oh and thing. three. Compare the stats. I, I don't want to hear nothing about no, red, no, no listen, week six. Dude, I don't hear nothing about no week six. Listen, I don't hear nothing about no week what? nine or week two. Dude. We talking about playoffs. Oh and three. You can't be oh and three to somebody and talk about you going to stand up to them in, in the playoffs. You oh and three. You can't even touch him in the playoffs. You're not it's even what, in the dude, same category. Dude. Listen, man, it comes down into statistics at the end of the day. It comes down into statistics. I'm talking, and when I look at quarterbacks, Wait, I real look quick, at we got what our they bring to the table individually. What we they bring in. 49ers rep. Oh, dude, by the way, he's a big 49ers fan, and J17 is greater than Purdy, and it's not close. Stop. 49ers. So this is, this Thank is you, Jesse, Jesse. By the way, this is our Thank rep you, of the NFC West roundtable, guys. Go check him out. He has all Super Bowl coverage on his channel. Thank He's you. the representative of roundtable no. sports for the San Francisco 49ers on the <laughs> NFC West roundtable. Purdy he's better, a bro. Big, he's a big Purdy Josh better. Allen fan, TD. He's a big Josh Allen fan. All I heard yeah, last that's, night. Yeah, that's, that's, all, that's the only reason why. Don't, don't sell Purdy out like that, bro. Purdy better than that boom. I'm telling you, you better give Purdy more credit. Josh Allen is 0 for 3 in the playoffs against Patrick Mahomes. The only you want me to go through the list of who Patrick who Josh Allen beat in the playoffs? Mac Jones on that list. Mac so Jones Lamar is Jackson. on that list. And so he beat Man, Lamar stop. Jackson. That's the only one. So he beat now, another Jackson. guy who can't get over the hump. Dude, stop. first off, first off, dude. Mitch right. Trubisky. Hold on. Don't make See, me I'm afraid that up. anybody. So I'm afraid that Mason Rudolph. So I'm afraid that any children that are currently watching this show or anybody that has a low <laughs> IQ Rudolph. is watching this Phillip and taking River. what TD says seriously. Oh, I got it! Oh, oh my God! Is it? Is it Joe? Oh my God! Joe Barry, <laughs> Philip Rivers, Mason Rudolph, Mac Jones, and Skylar Thompson. And you want to talk about a postseason resume? Skylar Thompson, Mason Rudolph, Mac Jones. Bro, bro, listen, man, like you cover football for a living and you're really football. trying to pass the narrative that a win and loss is based off of Mac Jones and Josh Allen facing off against each other. But what you fail to say is, is that out of all of those playoff games, all but one of them were top 10 defenses. 
Josh Allen and Pat Mahomes, Josh Allen and Mac Jones, Josh Allen and Mason Rudolph have are not trading blows whatsoever. It's against the defenses, which is completely good. And you know what? If we're talking about lists, I've pulled up a list of all of the things that have occurred right in this world since the Dolphins have uh, last won a playoff game. Oh, I hear you go with that raggedy list again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, Mason Rudolph. Bro. Here's the thing, bro. You know what, dude? I'm gonna, I'm gonna send a prayer up, my Lord and Savior, and give me the strength to not take the bait anymore. Uh, you know what, Dan? We we can, <laughs> we can end this bro. conversation. All I'm saying is, how many today. times? Dude, See, I gotta give you credit, bro. You are a master troll. You just, bro. Know. I'm not trolling. Dan. Y'all just don't like the truth. No, no, no. Dan, how many times did the Bills lose to the Chiefs in the last five years in the playoffs? Just curious. Three times, man. Three times. How many times has Josh Allen gone to the playoffs? Mm. There's only two five. quarterbacks. Five there, times. Four. Five. Four or five. Four. Five. Four. Five. five. Because we ended up get, because we lost the Texans one round and we lost. Oh, the I know. It's round. only two. Who? Uh, we lost to the Houston. Bengals and we lost to the Houston oh, Texans. Oh, Burrow beat them too. So Watson, Burrow, and Mahomes. So we start. So we stop, start to dude. figure out where where Josh Allen belong in this pecking order. I'm not taking this seriously until you can start talking about Josh Allen versus the defenses, and not Burrow, Josh Allen versus Joe Burrow. Burrow, Watson, Mahomes. They sent you home. No, Mahomes times three. Why? Because your quarterback ain't better than not than one of those guys. At some point, he got to get over the hump, but will he ever, Dan? Do you ever see Josh Allen beating Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs? Oh, ever. Yeah, next year. Yeah, next year. It's going to be beautiful. <laughs> and we go into the Super Bowl. It's going to be beautiful. Super Bowl. With and who? We go into the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. With, hey, Tua? <laughs> With Tua? Hey, it's a better chance than Josh Allen versus uh, Patrick Mahomes? Yo, listen, man. Honestly, Is it, though? Bro, because like... at least the Bills win playoff games. Ah, uh, but Mason Rudolph. <laughs> Phil Rivers, Matt Jones, Skylar Thompson. I don't want to hear no winning playoff games. And Lamar Jackson. Skylar, uh, and they almost lost to Skylar Thompson, Richie. <laughs> they almost lost. They almost lost. Come on, man. Josh Allen almost lost to Skylar Thompson, bro. Last minute. Oh, man, get out of here with that craziness, man. Get out of here. Josh Allen, man. Listen, Josh Allen is a good quarterback, Dan. But he's good enough not to be good enough. He'll always take you to the playoffs and disappoint you. And fans like you will always give him the excuse of it wasn't his fault. He did all he could. Yep, he sure did. Just like Miss Shakur in the back of the end zone. Just like Carl Heads on the coin flip. It's always Josh Allen. And y'all, you give him the excuses. But it's all good, man. Stay in purgatory. Playoff purgatory. And so I'm never going to take you seriously on this show. Playoff purgatory, Josh Allen. Purdy's better than him. Serious. That's what this was all about. Purdy is better than Josh Allen. Was Mark Sanchez better? Because Mark Sanchez beat Tom Brady in the playoffs. How many times did that happen? Well, so, Richie, well, Brees Hall's overrated, bro. One. All right. Mahomes beat him three times, Richie. <laughs> Brees Hall's overrated. Yeah, dude, he's overrated, bro. <laughs> That's what I've been saying, Dan. Get the hell out of here, man. <laughs> oh, Dan, I know, I know the feeling right now you have oh, in, in that skull of yours. Oh, dude. Dude. <laughs> you a schmuck, TD. Hey, I'm a schmuck. <laughs> man, Dan, 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 we got to uh, have a, like a, a plan, just me and you, to how to just no. figure out. You like, can't a, be taken down. No, y'all, y'all need to just start. Y'all need to stop ignoring facts, man. Dude, it's uh, it's it's tough. I mean, with TD's the final boss, you know why? And it's hard. You know why, Dan? He's hard to beat because I be laying out them facts about your player that you cannot deny. No, it's not that. Like you haven't laid out any facts. Like you're like, and I ain't fighting you right now. I'm fighting with Dan. And our delusion is, and so your delusion is so pathological. Like, I mean, I could get the smartest person on the face of the planet to come in here and attempt to convince you that what you're saying is you know n- not correct you but can't listen, get man, listen bro, you can't listen, get bro, the like, smartest I, guy in the planet to come on here listen because i'm already on thing. here oh my god here's dude here's yeah, the yeah, thing man listen on. i almost respect 
the level of troll. I almost Bro. respect the level of troll. I really, really do. It's not trolling. I respect though. That's it. the funny part. It's not trolling. Y'all just what don't want to admit it. It's facts, man. Listen, Josh Allen is overrated. He's a good quarterback. He's a great quarterback, but he ain't this Messiah y'all make him out to be. He be the reason they be losing. He missed secure in the back of the end zone, and y'all just want to brush that under the table like it's some, some dirt that you want to put in the trash. I'm saying is, is that <laughs> based off of your behavior, right, you cherry pick things wrong with athletes that you dislike, that you want to be proven correct with, but you don't have that same cherry pick mentality for the quarterbacks that you try to suggest are better than who, Josh Allen. Who I don't have that for? Brock Purdy? Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy. Why don't I you do, have I, that? No, for? no, no. I do have it for Brock Purdy. I did criticize them three games, but guess what? When it mattered most, he in a Super Bowl. Mm, he in the Super Bowl. He, yeah. he, he ain't out here losing to no Mason Rudolph. Hey, no well, you Mac know what, Jones. Man. It's Skylar Thompson almost beat y'all. He ain't out here going through that. He out here going to Super Bowls there. And you know what? Tell me I'm lying. Would he have gone to the Super Bowl last year if he didn't get hurt? Who? Brock Purdy in the San Francisco 49ers? Uh, you know he would have. Probably. Everybody yeah. know it. So at the end of the day, that man is two for two on Super Bowls right now, going to the Super Bowl. If you really want to be technical, Josh Allen can't even get there. It's he a team. He can't even team. get there, dude. It's a team sport, bro. It's yeah, a team well, sport. Led by your quarterback. Led it's a by team your sport. He has nothing to do with special teams. Nothing to do with defense. Who's the leader of the Buffalo Bills? Sean McDermott, the head coach. Stop. There you go, man. Yeah, your level of Sean McDermott, the head coach. All right. All right, Dan. All right, man. Your level of troll is just ridiculous, man. Your level all of right, troll well, is We nice got man. some super chats we got to catch up on. How about that, Dan? Let's go, man. Dirty Dan with a dollar. Dirty Dan with a dollar. NFL refs fan. Last week, TD said he wouldn't get emotional over winning a playoff game, but he literally cried after beating Buffalo week three last year. <laughs> I don't see nothing funny. Because we're a better yeah. team. Two would beat Josh Allen. How about that? No, my See, God. like, this is what I mean. You you were clowning the Jets fans for... Bro, I don't care about no week three win. He he trolling. NFL ref fan trolling. That's not true. But, like, I, I just it. want to push back on what you said about Jets fans. Someone pulled I got to defend my, gotta defend my fan base it. because I don't think there's anything wrong with what Jets fans had to feel last year. We've got heartbroken week one, <laughs> even with winning. And we were holding on to hope. I mean, what are fans supposed to do? Not be excited when we win in a situation where we don't feel like we should win? It's only <laughs> Dolphins fans allowed to be excited for meaningless only, I guess wins. Dolphins fans are the only ones allowed to celebrate wins? <laughs> yeah, meaningless knew. wins. You knew y'all wouldn't win in more than six or seven games, Richie. You knew it already. When Aaron Rodgers went down, you mean? Yeah, you knew it. Yeah, which is why we are, when we're winning, we're like, oh my gosh. Like, maybe the, the truth isn't that. You know, so that's why we're excited. You can't blame Jets fans for being excited, bro. Being the Eagles and those little wins we got. I never get over Josh Allen losing to Zach Wilson. Like, come on, bro. Go ahead. Twice. Twice. Oh. <laughs> Not once. Twice. You know, two and never lost to Zach Wilson. Guys. Right? You know, two and never lost to Zach Wilson right there. When will <laughs> the two of you? Oh, my God. That ball. Come to Earth. Zach Wilson twice. <laughs> that the whole like oh my qb be your qb is juvenile <laughs> it's juvenile like anybody that has above a fourth grade education understands but y'all overrate uh, him man y'all overrate josh allen y'all want to give him credit for everything but no blame it's always in the big game in the playoffs y'all look at how well he did for three and a half quarters and that dumb dumb boo boo the fool play he give you in the last three minutes y'all be like man he's the only reason we got that far every time that's what i don't understand like real talk no trolling that's what y'all do no, y'all, y'all absolve him. Dude. Did he miss your no, career in the end zone? Dude. No, it's not. <laughs> because I'll tell you this, and I and I will continue to tell you this. I will continue to tell you this. Josh Allen's entire career, Josh Allen's entire career go. is expected to make all of the damn plays. There's 52 other people on the field. Can you make them all once? They're allowed to make a play. They're they allowed need to make you a to. damn play that that switch the trajectory of the game. The, the San Francisco 49ers. So many of their wins. You could nod to a different player. 
on that team for the reason why they ended up winning. There's been years and years and years and years where if Josh Allen didn't literally do everything, and I mean everything, then they wouldn't have won that game. That's why I put Josh Allen above so many other people because a lot of the times it's not the Buffalo Bills versus the Green Bay Packers. It's it's, it's not Josh the Buffalo Allen. Bills versus this team. It's mm-hmm. if Josh Allen doesn't have a superhuman performance, the Buffalo Bills don't win at all. So if that's he doesn't, but, I'm but talking the, about how valuable he is to his team. But that's you're making the point. If he doesn't have the superhuman performance, you don't win. So but nobody's asking him that. Brock but, Purdy's a perfect example. But you um, know you need, need him to. Your team him. needs him to. And if he, he can't do it, then he ain't the guy. Dude, Pat Mahomes doesn't know. He yeah, doesn't do. need to have a yeah, superhuman do. performance for his but team he does. 100% of the time. But he does, Dan. Dude, listen, man. That's I'm the right. point. Listen, bro. I'm right. You're well, wrong. Okay, okay Move. real talk, though, Dan. Just one question. Right, real right. talk. Real talk. Did he miss secure in the back of the end zone? That's all, just be honest. Did he miss him? Uh, he got bumped <laughs> by his offensive court. Yo, G, man, without a <laughs> You corny, bro. You corny, bro. Bro, you said <laughs> You corny. Dude, you corny. Oh my gosh! Oh, you make me cry. And to, and to all y'all NPCs in the chat too, you know. Yeah. Dude, I just NPCs bro, it me. was one moment, just one moment of honesty. Just give us one moment of honesty. Did he miss security back at the end zone? He got bumped. Yeah, he got bumped. That's the truth. And so I'm not about to be gaslit. <laughs> and so I'm not about to be gaslit. Oh, oh, I'm so and so oh. I'm not about to be gaslit. Oh, see, this what I, <laughs> this, this is what I'm talking about. Oh my god! Not about gosh. to be gaslit. This is what I'm talking about. He can do no wrong. Oh my gosh! That's false. Oh, false. And, then I'm sorry oh, for laughing. TD, TD's laugh is making me laugh. The way he's laughing is. I just don't. I just don't take him seriously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then oh. trust me, I know exactly how you feel right now. <laughs> and just oh stay gosh. strong. That's all I gotta say. Oh, bro. Bro, bro. And you bro. are, which I love. Dude, you're not. You're not. Dude, listen, oh. dude, you're listen, not breaking. Oh. Don't break. Dude, listen, man. I'm perfectly fine. I'm good. Dan, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Oh, he got pumped. <laughs> Dan. Oh man, you're making me cry for real. Oh no. Oh, 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 oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> you alright, dude? No, Dan, I swear, boy, I thought you was going to have a moment, honestly. I didn't hear that. I didn't I didn't see that coming, man. He got born. Oh, my gosh. Dan, when are you going to take ownership for Josh Allen? Just once. Can he do any wrong, bro? Any- there's, been, uh, there's been several occasions oh. where I blame Josh Allen for a loss. There's been several occasions. I've, de- I've said it on the show. I've said it on my show. Dan, he missed Shakir, man. Yo. He missed him. TD, should we make a shirt? He got bumped. <laughs> it might be the best seller. But Dan, he'll get everybody to believe it, man. Stop, man. Dan, anybody stop. with eyes can watch the film. I got, I got to give a big thank you, though, to Josh Allen. Because Josh Allen is the number one seller on Roundtable Sports for his trash shirts. And he's also yeah. one of the top sellers for the graphic shirts. So there's a lot of love. For Josh Allen in the roundtable sports oh. community and a lot of hate. So he's very monetizable, Dan. So I do appreciate it's because it. <laughs> it's because everybody would donate all of their limbs for Josh Allen to be their quarterback. Every single team in this division would take Josh Allen right now. Even the Jets would take Josh Allen. Oh, he got bumped. 
Would the Dolphins, Dan? Would the Dolphins take Josh Allen right now? Dude, if TD saw that Josh Allen was traded over to the Miami Dolphins, he would go on a three-day-long stream of crying tears of joy. Every single Dolphins fan on the face of the planet would be just absolutely going nuts if they had Josh Allen. No, because our line is no good, and I'll worry about him getting bumped. Oh, man. Um, oh, my gosh. Uh, Damn, man. I mean, you know what, dude? Listen, man. I mean, Richie, Richie, do you feel understand. like he missed that play because he got bumped, Richie? I mean, it had an impact on the throw, but I still, but I still expect Josh Allen's talent to overcome that and make the throw in that moment. I mean, he did, held, he held. did get bumped, but I do still think that even though he got bumped, I've seen Josh Allen throw like seventy yards piss missile with his feet not set. Like he has the arm, I feel like, to be able to make that throw regardless of getting bumped or not. But he wasn't yeah. able to. And so to continue with that as well, there was a minute 45 seconds on the damn clock. And so you really don't think that Pat Mahomes wasn't going to march down the field the way that our defense is playing? Oh, so, so you just day, automatically would nothing. concede that. It means nothing. You had no faith that y'all y'all couldn't y'all couldn't hold them out of the end zone. Uh, with a practice squad linebacker core. And so against the best tight end ever to do it? No, not at all. I had zero confidence that we would be able to stop Pat Mahomes with a minute 45 and two timeouts left. Well, guess what? Zero. He didn't give his team the chance to prove mm -hmm. that wrong. Well, hey, you know what, man? Listen, I think making sure that your team has, you know, 99 out of 103 possible chances is pretty damn good. And I think our defense oh probably could have fucking made some sort of play throughout the game. It's, uh, it's, it is it's what it is. It is what it is. I will continue um, to worry about getting past the Kansas City Chiefs while I suggest that Dolphins and Jets fans should focus on winning a playoff game. We hey, will. Dan, I'm trying to get to the playoffs. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Y'all focus on what you got to focus on, and then I'll focus on the big boy stuff, which is getting past somebody in the playoffs after a couple of wins. Mahomes. That's the only thing. You so Bills remember. fans have big boy problems. Dolphins fans have little boy problems. Hey, man, no. if history repeats itself, <laughs> if the Jets just got to get into the dance, baby, because we can make a run. We proved that we beat the best. We beat the GOAT, Tom Brady. Let me see the Chiefs in the playoffs next year. Stop, Rich. Give me Mahomes. We'll show you how it's done, Dan. We'll show you how it's done in the playoffs. <laughs> Come on, Roger. Stay healthy, please. We'll show you how it's done. Come on. It's official. Our hosts think that defenses don't exist on this show. What? Uh, I mean, defense. Our hosts think that defenses play zero impact on a game. It's it's only quarterback versus quarterback. That's it. Hey, man. The one thing I learned about the defense is the max you can do with the number one ranked defense with the 32nd ranked offense is seven wins. <laughs> mm. that, but that's not related to what you were saying, Dan. I'm just, it's another topic. That's just something I learned that even the greatest defense will only win you seven games if you have literally the worst offense. Isn't that just, I just find it hilarious. Can we just take a moment and laugh at the New York Jets that they have the best ranked in certain metrics, number one defense, and then ranked 32nd on offense? Literally the best and the worst on two sides of the ball. I just find that hilarious and I deserve to laugh at my team because mm -hmm. it just, you can't even make it up. <laughs> We're going to find out next year, man. Mm -hmm. Which is why we just need to be middle of the pack on offense. And we'll be hey, TD, uh, you know that Mac Jones is more playoff wins? No, never mind. No, 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 no. Playoff no. wins. Playoff wins than who? No. Nah, Line Stepper says, hey, Richie, take that bet. Loser has to wear winnings graphic design t-shirt on the show. Which one? Think? For the uh, Brees Hall and uh, A-Chain, I think this was from. I'll take that bet. Easy. I think I think TD will look nice in a Brees Hall shirt. It's one of our best. Stop. Ones. Stop. We actually don't have an aging graphic tee because he's not good enough to have one on our show. But, yeah. Oh, my gosh. We Lord. got a Tyreek Hill, though. We got a Tua, though. <laughs> and a Mike Daniel. We'll have one next year. Glenn. Of wins is not a quarterback stat, Dan. How do you know how many games Buffalo beat Chiefs? Glenn, listen, man, I've explained this I've explained this to you a million times. Based off of the team's column, there's no win or loss column in a quarterback <laughs> stat sheet. There's not. There's not. 
debate over. Damn, people got to stop getting to our Jets coaches because people are interviewing our assistants for bigger roles. Or, and I don't like have, it. Have y'all lost any? Yeah. Um, and our safeties coach got interviewed for the Jacksonville Jaguars defensive coordinator position. <clears throat> and then he just got another interview for the Cowboys. And I'm hopeful that he does not go. Man, it, that's another thing about the Jets, bro. It's like we have a five-star coaching staff on one side of the ball like that the coaching staff on defense is just so freaking good the development that they've done and it's just so sad of how incompetent the other side is i just keep going back to it. the polarities man the polarities i can't take it anymore if we're in playoff purgatory fins in hell no, ain't, ain't no difference ain't no difference it's still leave both of us sitting here right here to watch this super bowl game on the couch and so there's definitely a difference between a Holiday Inn Express and a Motel 6. They both got beards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, what's it? It's all right, Dan. TD is just adding to his CVS receipts. We have one of him. Just clip it and wait. <laughs> yeah. All right. There's a lot of subject material. That's for sure. Did we get them all? Okay, Purdy doesn't have near the comp competitive well, competition. Excuse me, in NFC. Uh, uh, I mean, he's not that is him. true. <laughs> the him. NFC is just so much weird. The weird thing about that is rank the quarterbacks in the NFL. I think eight of the top ten are AFC quarterbacks. That's true. Yeah. Which is sad. I, I still him. don't like that because it's a matter of what you go through in the playoffs. The Lions were a good team this year. You know. Um, when you look at what you know the Bucks were doing, how well they were playing so do you think uh, the late in the season, the playoffs in the AFC, huh? And so, do you think the Lions would have made the playoffs in the AFC? Yeah, no, I think the Lions would have, but Green Bay wouldn't have, Tampa wouldn't have, but the Lions would have. Lions in San Francisco. Joshua says TD doing all that laughing, but his quarterback can't even throw in the playoffs. Yeah. Tua is a bum with his bum arm. Let's all laugh at Tua Bum. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Tua, didn't he rank last in the precision passing in Pro Bowl and Dan Orlovsky had better stats than him? Is that true? He got bumped. Good deflection. And so that made me. He got bumped, man. Me. And Baker Mayfield sidetracked him, told him to hold on, and they admitted it. See? Because Tua, he would have won that hands down. <laughs> Dan, you keep saying win a playoff game. How about you win a Super Bowl? Bro. Mm. You weren't even alive when you won a Super Bowl, man. That's corny. That's some, that's some NPC stuff right there, bro. I'm going to use the restroom real fast. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, we are entering the second hour, so I just want to remind you guys about the proud sponsor of Roundtable Sports and just want to, like, open you guys up to the partnership that we have with bet us sportsbook because it's really really important for you guys if you enjoy the content the last two hours was pretty comical if i had to say for a lot of different reasons if you really do support what we do here i cannot stress enough how important it is for you guys to simply just support our brands on this channel outside of just the channel itself of subscribing and hitting the like button and doing all those things but and the super chats, but like opening an account on BetUS with our link and just showing the brands here overall support really does a lot to the channel. And we're really proud to be partnered up. BetUS has been a huge driving force of Roundtable Sports' expansion, Roundtable Sports as a company. And like we are so proud to be represented and be in link step and lockstep with BetUS Sportsbook. So again, guys, they are having a, a deal this week heading into the Super Bowl three times. And when you open, when you click the link down below in the description, you will get a 125% sign up bonus on your first three deposits. So it used to be just one. Now it's three. Michael Vick is now a proud partner of them. As you guys see here, bet on the big game, Ken city for San Francisco, 125% bonus on your first three deposits. So you basically get free money to play with. Now's the time to do it. If you are a gambling person, I mean, th this is the week to do it. If you're not a gambling person, Totally understandable. Remember, bet responsibly. And I still think it's crazy that the Chiefs are underdogs. I ripped this. 
uh, money yeah. line too early. Again, I, I ripped it when it was minus 110. Now it's at plus 105. But hey, things do change. So just want to give another shout out to BetUS. We really do appreciate all the things that they brought to this channel because without them supporting what we do here, folks, what we're trying to build here is impossible. So thank you to BetUS for continuously being sponsors of the channel throughout the season and officially the off season. So thank you to BetUS. We appreciate everything you bring to the table. And we're excited to be on BetUS TV consistently as well. Let's go! Do we have um Patreon members tonight? Uh, yeah, we haven't uh, sent the link out yet, though. <clears throat> okay. Now's the time to do that, isn't it? Is that your way to tell me to do it? Oh, no, I was just wondering, do, did we go through all the Super Chats yet? We did. Every Wednesday night, the Patreon members pull up. We won't skip once. We never skip. Ugh, what a day. Um, TD, real talk, though. We got to figure out a time for you to eat those wings. I Should thought we, we were doing it when we go to Miami. Yeah, we'll do that. Guys, we're, yeah. if you guys didn't know, we're, we're all going to Miami for a little business trip. Um, Tyson couldn't make it, so it's going to be us three, and we're going to be doing shows together, but um, we'll may, maybe do some vlogs, some interesting content, so stay tuned. That's next week at the Super Bowl, Thursday night. So little disclaimer, next week we're not going to do our usual Wednesday night show. It's going to be Thursday night instead. Um Probably around the same time. I think 8 p.m. would be a good time for that. Thursday, next Thursday, us three will be together. Um, and I have to talk to you boys about equipment um, off camera. We don't want to talk about it while we're live talking to these people. But I have uh -huh. to think about equipment because I have to bring something. We won't talk about it. All right. Well, stay tuned. So we're all going to do the. So we're all going to do the combine down in Miami too. We're all going to run the 40 yard dash, and post our scores. Let's do it. I like that. <laughs> that would Let's be hysterical. Who do you that think is coming to first? Put it in the uh, chat. Who you think will win the forty yard dash between us three? I think TD is sneaky fast. Put it in the chat. I think TD is sneaky fast. Yeah, I'm not like TD's lie. like a weird like. Man, why y'all? Why y'all? Why y'all ain't got no faith in yourself? I'm old. <laughs> I'm yeah. old. Hey, you are Aaron Rodgers. Um. Wow. I mean, you're younger. Sorry. That, that's I don't want to put you. Yeah, it's okay. I'm hurt. It's too late. We should play ball, though. I would love to ball up with you boys. Basketball? Yeah. Man, Richie, uh, man, nah, nah, we ain't doing that, Richie. I don't want to make enemies. You'll be good in the post down low. No, I feel like I me and you would, would have good chemistry if we're on the same team. Bill, pick and roll. I'm the point guard. No, Kobe and Shaq. We were playing 21. I want all the, all the bragging rights. Oh, okay. We'll do 21. 1v1v1. One one v one. Easy. Easy Let's dubs. Do Let's do it. We should no, do a combine now. We can do it. So you can't dunk, Titty? Not anymore. No. No. Have you? Ever, like, did, I, did well, you the problem is, though? like growing up, like did you like do you have in high basketball school, in you? It, in high school, until I fractured my wrist. And oh that was shit! In my, that was in my eleventh grade season. That's why I joined the band and got a scholarship because I was screwed at that point. Um, yeah. What position? But, um, power forward. Power for it, yeah. But know. um, but uh, I mean, I, I only play one season. Um, but I can't do all that stuff anymore because my shoulder. I got a a bad shoulder injury. I really need to have surgery or whatever. But uh, we'll see. It's it's, it's, a, it's a real hinder. But I stop. Still, my dunk on you. You gotta you gotta start coming to my yoga classes. I'll get that shoulder opened up for you. Yeah, me and a chain. <laughs> Get A chain over there. He's too injury prone. He's got to come to Richie's yoga classes too. Every Saturday, anyone in New York, pull up to one of my yoga classes Saturday mornings. Oh, pull up. NYC, NYC, baby, Long Island. All right, let's get into some of the Patreon members. Bring them on in. And a quick reminder, folks: if you didn't already, we're hitting the two-hour mark. We'd appreciate if you could simply smash the like button. How many likes do we got? If you had a guess, Dan, what's the total amount of likes? Oh, no, dude, I dude, I guarantee you these people are being lazy with the like button right now, dude. I'm going to go low. I'm saying only 130. 141. Dude, Ooh. I was right. You were close. I was right, Can man. We got What's this up, at least dude? 250 right now? What's up, man? Y'all, like, haven't enjoyed, you know, with TD just, like, absolutely trolling me and Richie for the past two hours? These were trolls, people. Real takes. <laughs> oh, man. 
Nah, I'm brutal. just kidding, y'all. Smash that like button for us. Takes less than a second. Mm-hmm. Helps out the channel a lot. Just uh, like a reminder, because I know it's an innocent thing to forget, right? It's an innocent thing where your you're instincts isn't to hit the like button right away. So we're kindly just reminding you guys. It, it helps by, just by simply clicking a button because it helps us, uh, you know, the YouTube channel grow. And we're trying to grow something special here. All right. We exactly. had 10 people. 10 people said, you know what? I'm going to hit the like button now that you've reminded me. So thank you. <laughs> and to the people that already hit the like button and you're like, Richie, we already did it. Now what? Thank you. We appreciate it. All right. <laughs> Let's get into some callers. How about that? Do it. Bring them in. Are you sure? Bring them on in. Glenn! What up, Glenn? Hello. How are y'all doing tonight? Good. Great, I'll be doing great. well. Hey, Congratulations Great. on your um program on Monday. I don't oh, like thank the, you. I don't like the I don't like the um the the huddle. Y'all should have did off sides. Oh <laughs> that... everybody's done the huddle. How many times have you heard the huddle? The huddle. I don't know. I it's familiar. There's been a show called The Huddle. Has there been? Yeah, plenty of times. Yeah. Mm. Where? Yeah. And yeah. there was one in the 80s and 90s, 2000, 2000, all over the place. This is the revamp. Oh. <laughs> this is the revamp. <laughs> the better. ESPN, ESPN used to have one called The Huddle. Mm. I didn't know hey, that. Um, hey, you know what's so funny about um, TD and Richie? Y'all could be so right and so wrong at the same time. <laughs> on, tell the, on the running backs. On the running backs. Yes, A chain's a better runner, but um, oh, what's Jeff's name? Um, Brees. Brees Hall can be is a better catcher out the backfield. Brees is a better he weapon. A better, he's, yes, a receiver. he's a better all around weapon, but but um, A chain's a better runner with the ball. That speed kills. And it didn't help that Brees Hall was still coming off for ACL, so I don't think he had all his speed back either last year. Glenn, I just want to say thank you so much Glenn, for bringing that up because that Glenn, has a big thing to do with it, what? Glenn. That, that, didn't A-Chain play the season hurt? Yes, he coming did. off an ACL he did. tear? And, and, but he played through the ACL. That's why he was a better runner than Brees Hall last year. There ain't no Glenn, is, but it's about that. Glenn, can I say something to you? This is yeah. how we're supposed to debate as a Jets and Dolphins fan. <laughs> Right, you brought the facts. You brought the act. This is what this is what I've been waiting That's for. This an is an opinion. It was an opinion, air. Richie. This is a breath of fresh air, Glenn, because everything you said, I agree with. <laughs> the A chain is a better. Happy. The A chain is a better running back. Yes, yeah, that's right. You say he's a better runner of the football based on last back. year. Brees Hall is a better back. weapon, overall weapon, and we overall have yet to see weapon because he could catch out the backfield. Hey, and A chain can catch out the backfield. And next year we'll tell all we need to know. Now. One thing that hurt, hurt. Now, one thing that hurt A-Chain, though, was he was not, not the number one running back this year. Thank you. And that, Brees that wasn't hurt until him on his yards and stuff. And Brees, by the way, let's not forget. Time, let's not forget. Brees was on a pitch count in the first eight games. Yes, he was. Video. He was like the first three or four games. Wait, wait, but Glenn, but Glenn, we, we can't, we can't tell that to TD. He doesn't care about that. Though. But, he doesn't oh care about context and stuff. Gosh. It doesn't fit his about rolling, pitch uh, counts. We don't care about pitch counts where A Chain didn't even play six games. You talking about pitch played, counting? He missed six games. Come he on, missed man. like six games. Yeah, he missed six games. I mean, both of them did good for what they the amount of yards they got. I mean, you have to think. Brees Hall got two hundred and something carries, and that's nothing in the NFL season. I know, because he was on a pitch. That's count. not much at all. And he still that's, almost put up a thousand yards, but oh, don't say that. That's the TD barely game. over ten yards. That's barely over 10, 10 carries a game. And, and, and look and, at uh, a look at a chain one hundred and three. None. Exactly one hundred and three carries and had eight hundred yards. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. You guys could both be right and wrong at the same time and argue about it. But well, you're but, filling in the gaps, Glenn. Like you're you're doing a tremendous <laughs> job. But, like, but you really Glenn, are. but Glenn, when you do the math. If A Chan would have had um Brees Hall's carries on average, A Chan would have ran for eighteen hundred yards. 
and, and, and at one time, A. Chain played three games and had 450 yards and was second in the league until he got hurt. He rushing. got hurt. Three games, he, he had 450. In oh, three, three, and he had 450 in three games, and he wasn't even a starter. And he got now, hurt coming off of a yeah. three-game 450. And then went out for like four games and then came back Injury and got prone. hurt again. And then, yes, oh, wow. they had to think. Now, the problem you have is – how injury prone are these two running backs? Well, I do got to tip my cap because playing all 17 games after an ACL, I didn't expect that from Brees, and that was yeah. big. Well, and I got to tip my cap because not, my guy played through it. Let's not forget this. But, um, you know, Saquon Barkley, for example, when he tore his ACL, he was not the same back until a couple of years later. So let's give Brees another year. This is the hey, year where he's supposed to get back to his old self. Yeah. This wasn't even his full hey, old self. Dan, I appreciate all the betting tips. You want me a lot of money. But I will tell you guys, hey, if you guys want to bet, how to bet is not to start – Not you guys You guys do the worst thing you can ever do on betting on it is you go and you look at the, what you could do on overs. Oh, man, look at the receiver. What can he do? What you should be looking at is what can you bet on the unders? Unders. Okay. That's where you win the money is on the yeah. unders. Where That's what I've been you know, saying. Every time we make a parlay, they're all like over, over, no, over. I'm you, like, you guys, we got to do unders. some unders here. I know it's not fun the, the, to, to root for, but. i tell you now, the stupid guy, the, the, unless it's a sure thing, like a kicker for one field goal, uh, and, he, and it's a thing, okay. But, or Josh Allen on one turnover, I take that all day. <laughs> I, I take Josh Allen in one turnover in every game. Yeah. I know I don't get that. Wow. But well, you go well Glenn, we, we do have some people that's got to come on. Uh, yeah, I'll yeah, let you go. But, hey, great season, Glenn, we appreciate guys. It. Great Thank season. you so much, Glenn. Good luck on the show on Monday and stuff. I'll be watching. Thanks, Glenn. We appreciate, Glenn, we appreciate you, man. you, as always, man. And Look so I'll Glenn. tell you what, man. 2024 betting for Dan Mitchell is going to be the year of the under. There we go. It, it's going to be the year of the under. All right? Like, yeah, I'm going to be say, under like, heavy. That call over. was just like a breath of fresh air. It was like a Dolphins fan that gets it. Like, that was great from he Glenn. You, he told you A-Chain was better. He gave the facts, and he did it, said it in such an objective way. Respectful That's way. how you do it, TD. I'm glad That's he explained TD. to you a better way that A-Chain is better than Brees Hall. That's not what he said. See, you're now you're just... <laughs> See, now you're taking stuff out of context. Yes, what he said. No, you didn't even... Like, that's not what he said. Mm. And now you're lying to these people. Stop lying oh. to these people, TD. Oh, Lord. Come on now. Glenn. I'm, Man, I'm I miss parts. Make, I'm going to have to, now that I'm a co-owner of Roundtable Sports, I might have to make an executive decision and make a uh, push for Glenn to be the Dolphins representative of the Roundtable. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next caller, Mr. Andy. What's going on, guys? What's up, Andy? What's up brother? No, not much. TD, how the, how the kitties doing? They good? I yes, heard they were lot, sick last week. A lot better. Baby girl still got some drainage, but it's getting better. That's good. And so they That's have good. a flu That's good today? To hear. Thank you. <clears throat> a little worse. What? They're all right now. Yeah. It's had the flu this past weekend. It sucked. They had that Brees Hall. Yeah, they better now. <laughs> Richie, What's TD up? is right in a way. I hate, I hate having to admit it. But TD is right in a way. You overrate the Jets players. Uh huh. You do. I mean, because, which no, players? no, no. Hold on. Let me. Let Thank me you. Because I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to sit here and say that they're trash because they're not. <laughs> but you be out here acting like Sauce has the career of Darrell Revis and stuff, and he ain't that. He a top five corner, but he ain't that now. Come Andy, on. Andy, I'm sorry, but I just have to give you the facts right now. Oh. Sauce is on a better pace than Darrell Revis. Just saying, in his first two years. And that's strictly and, and until awful. he until he I mean, has the same uh, until he has all the stats. And I love that Revis, by the way. Revis, Revis does. There's no competition. Yeah, I mean, they, right now Revis is the Revis is better for sure. But I'm just saying, as but of you right be, now, you be acting years, like he already is that is what I, where where I'm getting at. He's on his way to do that. Maybe Andy, he's literally if he wasn't breaking records, he if he wasn't the first player at his position to do the things that he's doing, I wouldn't be saying these things. 
Thank you so much, Andy, because no, but, you're no, a but, real. A just like he acts like you know, <laughs> he acts like he acts like um the wide receiver there. He's a top five receiver. He yeah, well, so they top, top forty. He, he I top never said Garrett's top five. When he when you I act like it sometimes Garrett. when people be debating you, you get all up in your feels and you oh no he, come on now. Wait, talking about who Garrett Wilson? Yeah, yeah, he, he about thirty. When did I ever say Garrett Wilson's a top five receiver? You act yeah. like it. You may not say it outward, but you act like it. About yeah, I, I mean, I don't know what that means. I'm excited about the talent of my player, rookie of the year last year, and he's a young, he's a young but you promising act like player. they already have, like, Hall of Fame careers. But, what like, I still don't well, – going back – we can talk about Garrett if you want, but, like, I don't every, – everything you said about Sauce still didn't, like, hit me yet. Like, what – because everything – I said that, he's a top five corner. He's the best corner in the league. He is not. Patrick is. Sertan is the best corner in the league. Thank you. Oh, uh, wh where was Patrick Sertan on the uh, All Pro list? Ah, oh, come on, Richie. You know he. Guys, that like that, but that's what I'm trying to say here. The AP All Pro is the end all be all. Tells you who is the best player at each position in the NFL. And put Patrick Sertan in New York, and he would be. He's in the biggest media conglomerate the media in the market, world. And that's the thing I hate because the Pro Bowl is what you just said. That's the media stuff. All pro has nothing to do with media. It is strictly football analysts making their rankings. It has nothing to do with the media. If you think sauce, like it's funny because the Jets would always get hate and get slandered throughout years oh, and years I'm, and years. But I'm not hating. And now, I'm not finally, we have some good players that get recognition like now it's because it's the big media market. Like all of a sudden, this is what I'm talking about. What are you talking about? You're acting like I'm ripping him apart. I said he's top five. Okay, you're acting, like, you're acting like that's such a diss. No, but He's you're but you're making it but you're making it seem like me saying that Sauce is the best corner league is wrong. He's not though. He's I mean, not. Name one corner that's ever been first team All Pro in his first two years. I don't know. I don't pay attention to All Pro corners. Well, yeah, it's never happened. And you know what? But all you pro only do it because you have one on your team, so we don't know that. No, do you know what all pro means? First team all pro. Oh my god. Yes, I know what all pro is, Richie. I've been watching football since I was two years okay. old. I'm 34. So what does it mean? That you're the best player at the position. Best player. Yeah. Was it not? Best player at the position that a bunch of people might came together and said, mm, we're gonna pick him this year. He got a name. What do you mean? So now you're just discrediting the awards? The A the All Pro? All the awards are a popularity contest. Every award but All Pro, I'll give you that. Pro Bowl is a popularity contest. All Pro is not. Big difference. Uh, if it if it if All Pro wasn't a popularity contest, Lamar Jackson wouldn't have been an All Pro quarterback this year. Lamar was it was nothing to do with a popularity contest with Lamar okay. being a first team All Pro. What are you Where is about? his stats? Where is he number one in any of those stats outside his team being the number one seed? I mean, so you think Lamar Jackson is winning it because he's he's a well known quarterback? Because he, I mean, he finished one because Mahomes didn't. I'll, I'll give you an, a, a Jets example. Quincy Williams, linebacker. No one knows about him. No media attention. No one like cares about him. He was not a pro bowler. But he was a first-team all-pro because the NFL analysts recognized that he is a beast, and he got the honors that matters, which is first-team all-pro. The media, and no one talks about Quincy. That is the point here. That Pro Bowl and All Pro is two different things. So, listen, I know that Sauce got to continue to do it. I don't expect you to say that he's the best because he's still got to prove it. All I'm saying, he's on a level that we've never seen before. Andy, all they best. pay for All Pros in New York. I know. And, TD, you would kill to have Josh Allen on your team. You yes, wouldn't have to hide please. behind your chair anymore. Hey! <laughs> I, I, you wouldn't I, I, need I, the calming I, tea. You wouldn't have to hide behind your chair. You'd have a playoff win. I, I'm not so, so much debating that, Andy. All I'm saying, okay, thank you for coming on, Andy. You know what I just realized? Andy, did Josh Allen miss you during the end zone? He got bumped. Yes, sir. He got bumped. He got bumped. Oh, my gosh. I'm done. Thank you, Andy. Thank just you, make the we all know Mahomes were gonna, was going to go down the field and score. So it wouldn't hey, matter. I need to stop that with Mahomes. Is Bro, gonna go score anyway. it is Patrick Mahomes, who is one of the best quarterbacks of all time, how many times have we seen him go up the field in the final seconds or in overtime and well, score to either tie well, or win? Every well, maybe time, Andy, every time. I'm maybe, not hearing that. 
then maybe he would have went right down there and scored a touchdown and left Josh Allen a minute. Maybe. And y'all still don't have no faith you would have won. Why? Defense couldn't stop him all day. Our if Josh never Allen been was able to down by him. four points with a minute left, y'all ain't got no confidence. I know you don't. You know you don't. <laughs> I love how Andy wanted to get in on the uh, the action yes. of all the the hours. The, the first you attacking me and then attacking Dan. He wanted to I double didn't dip. attack anybody. Ah. I mean, you 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 dig your your claws into this take into the that is so like like delusioned with like your your like what you want it to be, and then you stand so strong that it's so hard to penetrate the shield. Because That's what the facts the facts be blocking. The facts be blocking. Glenn gave the facts. Uh, Andy gave the facts. No, Andy came on and gave an objective perspective, in my opinion. For sure. I think Andy came on and made a good point that in his eyes, <clears throat> Sauce is top five. Because, listen, Sauce has to prove it on a more – it's only two years, so I'm not going to expect everybody to anoint Sauce as the number one corner Sauce of the league. Is a, Sauce is a top three corner in the NFL. He could. Yeah, and I, and I, and I respect more. that. I'm not going to push back. I'm not going to push like he's the best, he's the best. He, But I'm, I just don't – one thing I don't like that I'm hearing is people discrediting the all-pro system. I don't know, understand that. Pro Bowl system, yeah. How many all pros did the Dolphins have? One, right? Tyreek Hill. Who else is an all pro? What is that noise? Is it know. just me? Uh, I mean, I think so. Yeah. Oh, I'm hearing about? like I was hearing like a commercial. No, no. Oh, okay. Never mind. Maybe I'm tripping. I think you're tripping. Um, but uh. Oh, I see what yeah. it was. I had ESPN open and one of the ads was playing. Who is the all pro? Who are all pros on the Dolphins this year? I'm, I'm genuinely curious. I don't even know. Besides Tyreek. Uh, Tyreek. I just said besides Tyreek. That's it. I think that's it. Damn. I think. Remember, remember the arguments that we had uh, months ago? <laughs> that you were dead on that your center will be an all pro. Your running backs will be an all pro. That this player well, on defense will be an all pro. Well, and I told you, I said, no, 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 TD. They will be pro bowlers, but they will not be all pro. Remember no, 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 no. So, so, so first of all, um, there was a big conversation that, you know, Raheem Moser got snubbed for all pro team. Okay. Um, a lot of people felt like, like he should have got it. But he didn't. That's fine. But at least he got the votes. He was up there in the county. As far as the center, let me look it up real quick because I don't know who was, but I will say this. Connor Williams had to end his season early. He was the number one rated center this year again, but he had to end his season early. So I don't – that, and that was one of the main reasons why we struggled on offense because our center was out. Hmm. Yeah, well – But some of these same guys, they were up for they They were up for the conversation. Yeah, they should be. The Jets had two first team all pros and one second team all pro. So three total. Not that it matters because the defense is all the all pros. The offense doesn't have anybody because we stink on offense. And that's why we suck. We suck. We suck. I get it. I get it. Keep pounding the table. We get it. Okay. All right. Let's get into some more Patreon. Hey. hey. Hello, guys. Hello, guys. Hey, man. Okay, okay, okay. Let me start on because I didn't have TD. I didn't talk to you about this one. CB83, he's on something, bro. He's on something. CB83, um, the guy on the, the guy that shoot you on the Dolphins roundtable. Uh -huh. He's on. So, he's on something. <laughs> <laughs> this year, and that's because I talked my shit like, and I uh, went in uh, super chats like talking about like, oh my, oh you don't like well like the mama mentality and stuff. And stuff. You remember that? Mm -hmm. And then, and then, and then the last one I saw, he would talk. He was talking, um, talking like shit about uh, about Lamar Jackson or something. I forgot. I forgot what he was. About. He was talking shit about some type of quarterback. Quarterback, I think. Okay. And I was just like, bro, CB eighty three. 
Hey, he's entertaining, but he's on something. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. You were talking about, okay, here it is. You were talking about that Chris Beard needs another chance. Chris Beard is not the problem. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was just like, didn't you guys, didn't, you should have said this. You had him for over 20 years. Mm-hmm. Can you guys win the playoff game in those 20 years? Nope. So then why is he still there? Listen, uh, that's that's why CB83 is on the show. It's a lot of opposing views, so we get to go at it every Friday. Yeah, no, no, it's good. It's entertaining. It's entertaining. And then I'm gonna go at I gotta go at um Dan real quick. Oh God, Dan, <laughs> Dan, I'm sorry, but I hate when people say hate when people say. Oh, oh, like they have these, have this many players. Oh, they have, oh, they have, oh, look at this guy, look at that guy. Look at this guy, look at that guy. Look, 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 he has, he has this, he has that. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but Bob Purdy, he, he, he top five quarterback. He top five quarterback because in this example, in the 80s, Joe Montana was number one, but the number one quarterback in the league. Who did he have? So who did Joe Montana have? Yes. You talk about um, we had Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice. He had a top. He had a top one in offense in the league. He had a top defense in the league, but he was still number one quarter number one quarterback in the eighties. So I, yes, I think, it is a. It is I think, Joe, sorry, 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 cons- I think that came with consistency, though. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that he's that he is. Like, I'm saying he top five this year. This year, when it comes to how he did as a quarterback this year, I'm what I'm trying to say is if Joe Montana could be top, could be number one in the '80s, '80s with him having the best best wide receiver, with him having the best running the running offense, with him having the best defense, why can't Brock Purdy have that? I mean, I think that's why can't Brock Purdy have that. I think I think that it all comes down to this, LaSalle. If Brock Purdy wins the Super Bowl this year and then next year he does it again and gets to the big game and loses or gets to the big big playoff game and loses or maybe wins another Super Bowl, like what Joe Montana has is the consistency, and we just haven't seen that from Brock yes. Purdy simply because he's young. So I think he's on yeah, the level. I no. think you're on to something. I, I don't think there's yeah, – I don't I, think we, we can I discredit just, Brock Purdy because of how good his teammates are around him if he's doing his job at a high level. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because then, because then, because then, Dan, because then you were saying, you were saying, like, when, when, um, for, like, to go at to, to, like, to defend us, oh, it's team, it's a team game. But then you go at Bob Purdy that, oh, but he has, he had Christian McCaffrey. Oh, he has this. Oh, he had that. Okay, but it's a team sport, though. But who, so, but but who thing, quarterback is in the playoffs? So the who thing quarterback is, is in the Super Bowl? That, so the thing is, is that I never said that I was pissed off about the fact. That Brock Purdy was top five. I was upset that it was suggested that he would be automatically the second best quarterback in the debate. That that was the key difference by itself. But I mean, I who suggested that? I can't imagine what type of <laughs> suggested don't get him what? started. Nothing. Suggested what? Nothing. Let's oh, move oh, on. Oh, nothing. Nothing. Let's yeah. move on. Yeah, Please. Brock Purdy, the second best quarterback in the NFL. Oh God, I'm gonna, dude. I'm gonna. <laughs> I need to see my therapist tonight. Yeah, he's gonna lose to the first. He's gonna lose to the first best quarterback this Sunday. What up? What up? What's up, what up man? Is he? Hey. Did Josh Allen miss Shakir? Uh, yes, he did miss Shakir. Thank you, thank you for the. Honor. He missed Shakir because his line was driven into him. He was oh. bumped. Sad. The, yeah, man, he, the ball was already the, that that defensive tackle, that beast of a man, Chris Jones. Give him respect because he earned it. He made the play on that play. Chris Jones made the play on that play. So yeah. let's 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 not sit here and, and deny someone credit for what they did. Chris Jones is a beast. He's a top five defensive tackle in the NFL, and he did exactly what he was supposed to do. And he did it against a top ten left tackle, or excuse me, top ten tackle in the NFL, in Deion Dawkins, and he was able to get the upper hand and drove him back into Josh Allen, and Josh Allen missed the, missed the pass. Now, Josh Allen has made passes like that before, so right. I don't see it as an excuse for Josh Allen. He's made those types of passes. So he blew it. However, on that particular play, he, 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 missed, he missed his receiver, and that, that's just it. So 
You can you can give Josh Allen the the blame for missing and Chris Jones the credit for driving that defense that, that offensive lineman into him at the same time. Two things can be true at the same time. I'll take he that. was bumped. He he was bumped and he missed the receiver. So th- there's that. However, there were three other plays where receivers flat out dropped passes where they hit them in the hands. Uh, da, 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 da. If you can give examples, so can I. They they were receivers who had balls that hit him in the hands and they dropped the pass that would have put the Bills in a spectacular position in order to score, and they did not come through for their quarterback who put the ball exactly where it had to be. That's period. Right. But he missed the big one at the end. The, the, you can call yeah, you can miss the big one at the end. You can miss the field goal at the end. That doesn't mean that that was the whole game. It wasn't the whole game. It was one play in the whole game. You didn't have to kick the field goal if you would hit it. But it doesn't matter. He the, the, the there's a whole sixty minutes of play. And he screwed. And, uh, yeah, Josh Allen missed that play. That one, that one, fine. Uh, you want to put that one on Josh? Put that one on Josh. All right, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna disagree with that. But the fact is, there was the a game. whole game that was played, and Josh Allen played an excellent game, and Mahomes just had a better game. That's uh, just the way it is. But I'm here to talk about the Super Bowl, right? Because this is what the show is supposed to be about. We ain't here to, this ain't about the Bills Dolphins, right? This is about the Super Bowl. You're right. So uh, I'm taking the Niners in the Super Bowl. There you go. Uh, is there my any hot Bills take. Fan that's taking the Chiefs. I'm curious. Is there one? They're Bills probably. They're, they're definitely some. Uh, I'm not taking them because it's the Chiefs, or or, or be, uh, I don't care. Like if Mahomes win another one, he's great, and I'm not going to hate on greatness, right? Like he he he's our rival right now, uh, but we do stand up to him. It's like Tom Brady, where we see him in the playoffs every year and he beats us. No, it's like no. Tom Brady beat the shit out of us every year, and little brother does. Like it was it was bad. Can't relate. We we've beaten Mahomes, not just not in the playoffs and. So that's bad too, but it's not as bad as like thirty-four to three bad. Like that's that's bad. And so while I'll, I'll concur to that, doesn't really matter to me who wins this game or not. But I think that the the Niners are gonna do it, and I think that the Super Bowl MVP will not be a quarterback, regardless who wins the game. Mm. The Super Bowl MVP of this game will be a running back. It's gonna be Pacheco or McCaffrey. If the Chiefs beat the Niners, it's not because Mahomes outgunned them. The Chiefs defense, or the Niners defense, is too good against the pass, and it's not going to be because Purdy went out there and slaughtered the Chiefs defense because the Chiefs defense is too good against the pass. Both of those defenses are miserable against the run, and you've got two of the better running backs in this game. This is not Mahomes Purdy, in my opinion. This is Pacheco versus McCaffrey. Now, see, Izzy, you couldn't be more wrong, and let me tell you why. McCaffrey. We'll see can- on Sunday. McCaffrey can win it, but Pacheco can't win it because if you go back to the last Super Bowl when they played each other, I said that Niners are gonna win though. So no, I'm just saying in general the the running backs ain't gonna be the the winners. They're not gonna win the um MVP. And and when I say the Kansas City Chiefs, do you remember the last time they played the Chiefs in the Super Bowl? The true yeah. MVP of that game was Damian Williams. Uh-huh. He was the only one riding. He was the only one moving the rock. Patrick Mahomes struggled, <clears throat> but they still gave Mahomes the MVP. That's true. But if the Niners win, like I said, the MVP would be McCaffrey because Purdy's not Mahomes. They're they're definitely winning, in my opinion. They're not winning, bro. I think I think I think they win this one by ten points. Y'all, ooh, y'all are bold against the Chiefs. I I don't care if the Chiefs win. There's no my team didn't lose or win, so what do I care? <laughs> like I don't care. I'm just saying in general, I just yeah. don't see how people picking against Mahomes at this point. But no, do you no, have no, a personal gripe against Mahomes? No, no, I think he's great. He's the he's the best quarterback in the NFL. Mm-hmm. There's, there's no doubt in my mind who the best quarterback in the NFL is. The question isn't about Mahomes; it's about his weapons coming through for him. Like Josh Allen, when we played the Chiefs, those three drops. Are your guys going to catch the ball when it matters the most? Are your guys going to be able to get off those corners when it matters the most? Charvarius Ward, a former chief, is on the Niners. He knows that offense better than any defender in the league when it comes to route running schemes. There's a lot more that goes in. This is way deeper than me just being like, well, to hell with the Chiefs. No, if they win, congratulations, Chiefs. You won the game. I don't have a dog in a fight. I don't care. And then I know plenty of Bills fans do. They're like, I don't want to see Mahomes with another one. If he wins it, then so be it. He wins it. I don't, I don't care. And if the Chiefs win, he probably does win the MVP. But I got the Niners winning the game. And I got Chris McCaffrey going off on that defense. Just like the Bills. The Bills went for 170 on him. And I know Josh Allen had a lot of that. But Josh Allen, the Josh Allen doesn't have Chris McCaffrey. The Niners do. And that's where I'm that's where I'm resting my head at. 
I think I think that the Niners are going to win this game. On offense, it'll be on Chris McCaffrey's back. Purdy will play the support role. You'll see Debo Samuel and I. You get you know some some passes here and there to get the first downs, and you'll see McCaffrey eat in the uh, short yardage and the goal line situations to win the game. Yes, the so place where that this mixes up and gets murky to me is special teams, because the Chiefs do have Nicole Harbin back, and even though he's not really making a big impact on offense. That dude can still take anything back on special teams. So if I'm wrong, it's going to be a special teams thing that happens that costs the Niners the game, in my opinion. Hmm. Do you think that hmm. McCall Hardman, former Jets, going to make a play in the Super Bowl? Ah, Richie, I take the over and one and a half yeah. catches. Richie, don't forget, no Jets players, boy. Yeah, but I like that. At least you root for all ex Jets players, though. I don't root. Do you? Do you Not know, so much root, but you you remember him. You remember the uh, remember the fumble the Chiefs had against the Bills that went back for the touchback mm. at the goal line. Remember it was a, a fumble at the one yard line, and it went to the back of the end zone, and then the Bills this? got the ball back. Yeah, I remember it. It was the Chiefs Bills game in when Josh. Out, yeah, in the playoffs when the Chiefs. Oh, went through the, the touch, yeah, 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 at the end zone. The same thing that happened the, the following yeah. week in another game, yeah. That was McCall Hardman, former Jet, who had the fumble. That's all wow. I was like, see, that's why we traded him. And, <laughs> they, and they still couldn't beat him. Yeah, well, that, well, was, that was after, oh, you know what that was after? The fake punt to DeMar Hamlin. So it kind of bailed him out. I can't forget that. Oh, my gosh. I should <laughs> say make a wish punt. Okay. All right, we got the final uh, Patreon member, JD the Great. What up, JD? What up? Can y'all hear me? Yes, yes sir. sir. What up, man? Congratulations on all the success, fellas. Thank you so um, much, man. I'm just curious about a few things. I'm not on here really to troll or ask questions. Um, as far as the Super Bowl, I, I'm going with the 49ers because my wife's yeah. that fan. But I noticed in y'all merch department, there's no championship division one for the 49ers. Mm -hmm. And I was just curious to see if y'all was going to have one of those shirts. So the philosophy behind that one, great question, uh -huh. is because the NFC West roundtable was opened. We started that right as the playoff started. And I thought, I don't think 49ers fans care about the NFC West division title. They want to win it they all. Don't. You're right. They don't. So I don't think I, – I didn't think 49ers fans are going to go out of the way to get division title T-shirts. They want right. Super Bowl champion T-shirts. So I didn't think it would be smart from a business standpoint to make them. Uh, yeah, I but, I mean, say, for that. example, that they win the Super Bowl. You best believe. Oh, yeah. They <laughs> We're going to have Bowl. a design. That's the shirt that we'll be making for sure. I mean, either way. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and TD, man, these last couple of nights and these shows you didn't have, man, you, you, you've been so on point. And this one here, I'm about to say, this one here tonight, if y'all are having this much fun and, and you know, doing what y'all do, I can't wait for next week's shows to pop off, man. That's what's up, man. Yeah. Well, you, man. Say, I, can't, I, I, can't, I can't wait. You know, <laughs> I know our Dolphins are trash. I've been, I've been a fan – not as long as Glenn, probably a little bit longer than you. And I've seen a lot of, a lot of disappointing years, and I don't really have too much faith in them right now. And I know we're going to resign Tua. I know earlier you and Dan was talking about trading them. <laughs> that would be that would be a dream come true, but I know it ain't going to happen. So, <laughs> so I learned I just got to accept it. You know, yeah, I mean, I'm there I too. Got on here, yeah, I'm about to say, I finally able to get on here with y'all. I'm normally getting off of work around this time, so I'm driving. That's why I'm not on the camera and stuff like that. So I'm just wanted to say congratulations again, fellas. Oh, I had one last thing I wanted to ask y'all about. Mm -hmm. sure. I noticed y'all all got all these round table sports and subscribe to all of these. Mm. But because we are a member of this one. Do we have to be become a member of the rest of them to get the same access, or how does that want to work? Well, that's a great question. We don't have Patreon active on those yet. On oh, that, yeah. okay. But when you do have it, how does that yeah. work? So, so that's what we're question. thinking, so what we're thinking uh, about doing is that once we launch these Patreon factors, we're just going to change our Patreon to Roundtable Sports, so okay. that way it's not individually based off of each channel so theoretically you would be able to call into each and every single show 
hopefully we'll be that able to. Uh, yeah, I mean, that hopefully. Would be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully we'll be able to have all those Patreon uh, things yeah. rolled out by next season. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, most definitely. I mean, that's where I think we're probably going to go with it. Is yeah, because having like transition. eight different Patreon links. Be, to that's a, a shit ton to keep track of. <laughs> that is, that yeah. is a lot to keep track of. The AFC, the NFC West one has been the second most entertaining one. I looked at all of them. Yeah, but that NFC West one, y'all do y'all have something good going on there with them, boy. Yeah, yeah. thank you, well, man. Y'all have, man. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, man. Seriously, uh-huh. that you've been tuned into the expansion <clears throat> of what we're doing here beyond the AFC East Roundtable, because obviously this is the original show for four years, and then as you know, we firstly expanded to the three ones. So it's really cool to hear your thoughts and you're just like opinions on what we're doing from your perspective so we appreciate that and all your support man we really do i appreciate that too man thank you appreciate you homie i love i love the merch i love the merch even though dan did mess my name up there and i did get it but it's all good man (laughs) it's easy there man it's all good there i'm hopefully we do well this season super bowl or bus you already know we going ends up no matter what y'all thank you man thank you man all right Nice Peace. to meet you, bro. Thank you so much for all the kind words. Dude, no. that was dude, that was nice, man. Dude, yeah. that was nice. Someone came on here and was just spreading positivity. That's what Dolphin fans do. And it was cool that he like broke down his thoughts of each round table. Like, this one's the best. I yeah, checked this all is, of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is I'm curious. No, guys, like, yeah, chat. have you guys checked out all the different round table shows? Like, if you would rank the three, not to say anything's better than the other, but I'm just curious if anyone yeah. one stands out. Because, hey, man, we, we want to make sure it's entertaining. So Yeah, uh, exactly. I mean, cool. anybody that's in the chat right now that has watched some of the other roundtables, please let us know which one you think is the most entertaining. Yes, please. And if you haven't of course, watched, that's at AFCs. If you haven't watched them yet, come Go on. check them out. You got TD All and Dan of them. and then you got your boy behind scenes. I know you're upset that you can't see my face on there, my personality, because you guys love me so much. Yeah, and right. so we're going to make Richie House one of them next year. Because me Who's and TV producing? can't do it all. The Who's Knicks? producing? Bro, you're being both. Oh man, I get double paid. Then. <laughs> yeah, I got I got to produce and host. The whole idea is the host sits back and hosts. Richie nah. sit back and host and watch the dicks. That's all he do. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. That or like we just need to get some of the other talent to go on ahead and just be a host of the show. We could probably ask. I don't know. This is business talk. We can't be talking. Yeah, Richie, I'm, yeah, waiting, we on, I'm waiting on that I'm Knicks saying. invite, man. That what? The Knicks invite, man. You're supposed to invite me to a game. Bro, you are like your hatred. I think it's a hatred towards me or something because it, it's beyond the Jets. It's even to the Knicks. Guys, like TD is a Knicks hater. Like the Knicks are doing the playing their best basketball I've ever witnessed you know in funny. my entire life. And you know what TD says? They're overrated. They're trash. First round exits. I'm like, man, I can't have fun anywhere with this guy. You know what? You know what's crazy, Richie? The first NBA team that I was a fan of was the New York Knicks. I'm just thinking about it. And then you went to Boston? No, remember my story uh-huh. is my story is um when I was young, I would sit on the living room floor and look up at my dad on the couch and he would just be in misery because the Knicks would beat up on the Heat in the playoffs every year. I'm talking about um Latrell Sprewell, Allen yeah. Houston. Even oh, yeah. before that, all of those guys. The Heat and, and the Knicks were, have a deep rooted rivalry, bro. Yes, I watched it all the time, but y'all always usually got the better in that time. And I was a huge Sprewell and in, Tri- in Houston fan. You know, Houston used to come up, quick pop up shots oh, and all that. Good. Yeah. Um, but then Houston just retired and Sprewell went to Minnesota. So I follow Minnesota. That's what I learned about KG. KG went to Boston. That's when I learned about Rondo. And it's from Rondo ever since. And now Rondo out here going to jail and stuff. So that's over so, from. so you follow the players to I've mean, always oh well because I've never had players, I've never had a team, but now I'm a, it's official. I got my favorite team of all time, and that's gonna be my favorite team forever. Who? The Boston yeah. Celtics. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it just happens to be the first seed this year, was in the finals. Oh man, they better than the Knicks. That's all that matter. But I just wish you'd like, cause like you you attack me here on this show, and then even I don't behind like closed attack doors, you, Richie, you, guys, you make guys, it seem so visceral. Let you guys know that what TD does live 
he still does it behind the scenes to your boy. Right. Like I'm like, yo, TD, like I'm so excited about my Knicks. Richie, they trash. They overrated. You kidding me? First round exit. They they're terrible. I'm like, they are. They gonna be a first round exit, and you know. No, I don't know. If Bro, they were a first the, round exit last year, I'd, I'd admit maybe you're right, but they weren't. It's the Knicks. Yeah, we made it to the second round that next year, uh, last All year. Right. So the, the goal is to improve into the Eastern Conference Finals. That's the goal. Ain't no helping you, right, Richie. Then? Ain't no helping. Ain't no helping no Knicks fans. Ain't no helping y'all. Just ladies and gentlemen, thank you Dan. so much for tuning in to yet another edition of the Dan, AFC. Sick of the NBA talk. Uh, guys, honestly, man, we sincerely appreciate all the love, all of the support that we have seen on all of the roundtables that we have launched as of right now. Once again, giant shout out to BetUS, guys, matching 125% of your initial deposit. Second that you sign up, supporting our sponsors is the exact same thing as supporting us. Um, super excited about this off-season schedule, guys. As we said before, Richie and TD and I are going to be in Miami, and we are going to be planning the entire off-season and next regular season including events so be on the lookout for an in-person episode of the afc's round table uh next week maybe even two i don't even know what's gonna happen there's gonna be a lot of saucy ass content so make sure you subscribe if you haven't and glenn came in with another super chat saying uh look at the sporting news all pro selection that is voted by coaches and players mm. thank you glenn man gotta love glenn appreciate you glenn Name your top five QBs five to one. TD, I'll, I'll let you do this. Uh, five is um, Tua. Fuck. Four. You're lying to yourself. Skylar Thompson. You're lying to yourself. You lie to whoever. Three is Mike White. Two is Brock Purdy. And one is Patrick Mahomes. Where's Zach Wilson on that ranking? Stop, Richie. Five, top five for real. Patrick Mahomes, number one. Um, Purdy's number two. Um, number three, I got to go with Joe Burrow. Number four, I'm going to go with Lamar Jackson. And number five, that bum Josh Allen. Not CJ Stroud? No, nah, I'll give him six. I give him like seven, somewhere around there. All right, you heard it here first. Josh Allen is five on TD Finn's talks ranking. Yeah, that bump five. Top five quarterback. I'm down for that. He would have been top three if he would have missed Shakir. Chiefs going to he load up box and make Purdy <laughs> beat them like they did to Miami. Chiefs win. All right, Glenn. He's on the Chiefs bandwagon. I feel like. I feel like I haven't heard one Bills fan say they think the Chiefs are going to win. Just something I find interesting. Yeah. All right, folks, that's going to wrap up this show. Thank you guys so much for tuning in as always. We peace and love you all. See you guys next week on Monday. Make sure you guys uh, go subscribe to BetUS TV, on, and you'll see us on this channel Thursday night, 8 p.m. EST. The Wednesday night show will not be happening. It's going to be pushed back to Thursday because we're going to be together in Florida. So see you guys then. We are out. Peace. Later.